All praises to the most. So tonight's topic is the parables of wisdom. Okay. We're going to be continuing on the book of Mark chapter 12. All right. We're going to continue on in the book of Mark. But before we go there, let's go to, let's go to the book of Psalms. Let's go there. We read it earlier in the prayer. All praise to the most. Uh, Psalms chapter 119. Love this verse right here. Psalms 119 verse 18. Read that. Psalms of the 119 verse 18. Come on. Open thou mine eyes that I may behold wondrous things out of thy law. This is King David speaking. He says, open thou mine eyes that I may behold wondrous things out of thy law. Because our eyes are dim. Our eyes are closed. You understand? That's why we beg in the most High God to open our eyes that we may behold wondrous things out of his laws. Watch this. Give me the book of Baruch 4 and 1 real quick. Baruch, the fourth chapter, the first verse. Baruch 4, verse 1. Watch this. Baruch, chapter 4, verse 1. Come on. This is the book of the commandments of God. Read. And the law that endureth forever. Mm -hmm. All they that keep it shall come to life. But such as live it shall die. You see that? So all they that keep the laws of God, the commandments that are written in this book, will come to life. We will get eternal life. Read on, verse 2. Come on. Turn thee, O Jacob, and take hold of it. Mm -hmm. Walk in the presence of the light thereof, that thou mayest be illuminated. You see that? The Lord is commanding us to take hold of the laws, statutes, and commandments written in the book, that we may walk in the presence of the light thereof, which is the commandments according to Proverbs 6.23. It says what? That thou mayest be illuminated, that your eyes may be opened, that you may be enlightened. That's what the Lord is saying right there to us. You understand? To open our spiritual eyes. Watch this. Give me that in Isaiah 29 real quick. Isaiah. Because Isaiah said the same thing in the spirit of the Messiah. Watch this. Isaiah chapter 29, verse 18. Read that. Isaiah chapter 29, verse 18. Come on. And in that day shall the deaf hear the words of the book. You see that the deaf, those that are, those of our, our, our those of us that are spiritually deaf, the law says on this day the deaf will hear the words of the book, meaning what the understanding will be opened unto us. Go ahead. And the eyes of the blind shall see out of obscurity. You see that the eyes of the blind shall see out of obscurity because what is obscuring our vision is sin. Sin is obscuring our vision. Captivity. Hard bondage is obscuring our what? Our vision. So the Lord says, I'm going to open your eyes that you may behold wondrous things out of my laws. Read that again. Verse 18. Isaiah chapter 29, verse 18. Mm -hmm. And in that day shall the deaf hear the words of the book. And the eyes of the blind shall see out of obscurity and out of darkness. You see that? We're going to see out of obscurity and out of darkness because we are in the darkest kingdom on earth you understand we are in the darkest kingdom ever get there in isaiah isaiah chapter 60 and verse 1 and 2 watch this isaiah chapter 60 verse 1 arise on. shine for mm -hmm. thy light is come and the glory of the lord is risen upon thee you see that it says thy light is come what is that light the same light that we read about in isaiah 29 Get that in Proverbs chapter 6, verse 23. Thy light is come. Read that. The Lord is going to lighten our eyes. He will illuminate us. Come on. Proverbs chapter 6, verse 23. Read. For the commandment is a lamp. Mm -hmm. And the law is light. And the law is what? And the law is light. And the law is light. The law is light. So that's the light he's talking about, the laws of God upon us, okay? Go back to where he was at now. Isaiah 60 verse 1. Isaiah chapter 60 verse 1. Read. Arise, shine, for mm -hmm. thy light is come. You see that? Thy light is come. The laws of God is upon us now. We have, The Lord has had mercy upon us to open up the understanding unto us. Come on. And the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. The glory of the Lord is risen upon us. Now, before the Lord returns, the glory of the Lord that is risen upon us is what? Is his understanding that is bestowed upon us. Go ahead. 
For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth. You see that darkness has covered the whole planet Earth right now because the hand, the earth is given to the hand of the wicked. Hold this, Job 9.24 real quick. Let's get there. Darkness shall cover the earth. Okay. Job chapter 9, verse 24. Go ahead. The earth is given into the hand of the wicked. You see that? The earth is given into the hand of the wicked. That's the white man. He is the wicked. Come on. He covered the faces of the judges thereof. He covered, he covered our faces. He whitewashed all our history in the Bible and throughout history also. Okay, come on. If not, where and who is he? If it's not him, the wicked, the white man, where and who is this man that is doing all this outside of him? None. Okay, go back. Isaiah 60 verse 2 again. Isaiah chapter 60 verse 2. Read. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth. The darkness that has covered the earth is sin. Christianity, politics, democracy. You understand? Feminism. That's the darkness that has covered the earth. Sin. Idolatry. Go ahead. And gross darkness, the people. You see that thing? Darkness has covered the whole planet earth, all nations, but gross darkness, meaning what? The greatest darkness has covered the people of the most High God. That's why in verse 1 says, read verse 1 again. Isaiah chapter 60 verse 1. Go ahead. Arise, shine, for thy light is come. Mm -hmm. And the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. You see that? The glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. It says, for thy, for thy light is come. Whose light? Jacob's light. Who's that? Christ, our Lord and Savior, the black Messiah. So now, read verse 2 again. Isaiah chapter 60, verse 2. Mm -hmm. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth. Come on. And gross darkness the people. And gross darkness the people, meaning the greatest darkness will cover the people of Jacob, us. That's why it says, for thy light is come, because we are and we are covered by gross darkness, by the wicked who the earth is given to. Go ahead. But the Lord shall arise upon thee, mm -hmm. and his glory shall be seen upon thee. Meaning what? The most High God is going to make sure that all the nations know that we are the 12 tribes of the nation of Israel. He's going to do that thing. He's going to set us in order before their eyes. That's what the Lord is doing right now with us. You understand? Okay, now what now that we understand the most I said he will open our eyes. Go back to Psalms 119 again. Psalms 119, verse 18. Again. Psalm chapter 119, verse 18. Go ahead. Open thou mine eyes that I may behold wondrous things out of thy law. That's what we're praying for. We're praying for the Lord to open our eyes, our spiritual eyes, that we may behold wondrous things out of his laws because the wondrous things are hidden in his laws that's why the secret source the key to understanding the wondrous things that are in the laws of god we must obey and apply god's commandments and we must be sincere in this truth understand that okay let's go to the book of mark now mark chapter 12 verse 1 we went over it so i'm not going to go over verse 1 because i already did a breakdown on verse 1 we're going to read verse 2 i touched on verse 2 as well I'm going to go to verse 3, but let's start at verse 1. Mark 12 and verse 1. Come on. Mark chapter 12, verse 1. Go ahead. And he began to speak unto them by parables. Read. A certain man planted a vineyard and set an hedge about it and digged a place for the wine fed and built a tower and led it out to husbandmen and went into a far country. So now this is talking about Christ he, when he was going over the parables of the vineyards, okay? He says, he said, it, he, what? He planted a vineyard. The vineyard is the house of Israel, okay? Get that real quick, Isaiah 5. I'm not going to go over this. You can go over chapter 3 of the parables of wisdom to understand this, okay? I'm just going to touch on it again just to refresh the memory right here, okay? Read that, Isaiah 5 and verse 7. Read that. Isaiah chapter 5 verse 7. Mm -hmm. For the vineyard of the Lord of hosts is the house of Israel. You see that? The vineyard of the Lord of hosts is the house of Israel. So the vineyard in Mark 12 is the house of the 12 tribes of Israel. So go back. Mark 12 and 1. Mark chapter 12 verse 1. Read. 
And he began to speak unto them by parables. A certain man planted a vineyard. The vineyard is the house of Israel, come on. And set an hedge about it. The hedge that he set up is set about the house of Israel is his laws, his commandments. He gave us the commandments, come on. And dig the place for the wine fed. Mm -hmm. And build a tower. Build a tower of righteousness around it, come on. And let it out to husbandmen. Husbandmen is the leaders. He let it out to the husbandmen. The one that's supposed to work in the vineyard. Go ahead. And went into a far country. And went into a far country. He went, he went to heavens. He went to the heavens. He went where the most high God is. Get that in Acts 1 and 9. He went to the most high God. He went into a far country. Okay. Acts 1 and 9. Let's read that. Acts chapter 1 verse 9. Go ahead. And when he had spoken these things, mm -hmm. while they beheld, he was taken up, and a cloud received him out of their sight. So now while the disciples beheld Christ, guess what? A cloud received him out of their sight. Guess what? He was teleported into the chariot, and he went back to the Father. That's the far country Christ went to, okay? To sit on the right hand of the Most High God. So now, go back to Mark now, chapter 12, verse 2. Mark chapter 12, verse 2. Read. And at the season, he sent to the husbandman a servant. At the season, at the season, meaning the season of harvest, he sent to the husbandman a servant. You understand? Go ahead. That he might receive from the husbandman of the fruit of the vineyard. You see that thing? So now the leaders are supposed to get themselves together, ready to prepare for the people that are going to come to hear the word of God. So he says, he sent unto them a servant that he might receive from the husbandmen of the fruit of the vineyard. The fruit of the vineyard is the understanding of this Bible. The husbandman's job is to learn and understand and apply and be able to go out there and teach the people, bring the people in and educate them from the basics to the intermediate to the advanced. That's the job of the husbandman. Okay. So now read that again, verse 2. Mark chapter 12, verse 2. Mm -hmm. And at the season, he sent to the husbandman a servant. Stop right there. At the season, he sent to the husbandman a servant. Hold this. Let's see. Let's read, let's read the same account in Matthew 21, verse 33. Matthew chapter 21, verse 33. Go ahead. Hear another parable. There was a certain householder which planted a vineyard and hedged it round about and dig the wine press in it, and built a tower, and let it out to husbandmen, and went into a far country. That's the same account we read in Mark 12. Come on. And when the time of the fruit drew near. And when the time of the fruit drew near. That's the season. When the time of the fruit drew near to be picked from the vineyard. That's the season he's talking about in Mark 12 and 2. Okay, come on. He sent his servants to the husbandmen mm -hmm. that they might receive the fruits of it. You see that thing? So the Lord sent servants to the husbandmen that they might receive the fruits of the vineyard in which the husbandman was, was laboring in. You understand? So what we're reading here is that we're reading the same account that we just read in Mark. Okay? So the time of the fruit is what is this talking about? Get that in uh, Joshua 3.15 real quick. Joshua chapter 3 verse 15. The time of the the time of the fruit drew near. What, what time is that? Read that. Joshua 3 verse 15. Joshua chapter 3 verse 15. Go ahead. And as they that bear the ark were come unto Jordan, and the feet of the priests that bear the ark were dipped in the brim of the water. Mm -hmm. For Jordan overfloweth all his banks all the time of harvest. You see that? For Jordan overfloweth all his banks all the time of harvest. So during the time, the harvest season, that's when we harvesting what? The fruits, the new fruits. You understand? Get that in Exodus 34 verse 22. Okay. During the time of harvest. During the time of the first fruits. Okay. Read that. Exodus 34 verse, verse 22. Exodus chapter 34 verse 22. Go ahead. And thou shalt observe the feast of weeks of the first fruit of wheat harvest mm -hmm. and the feast of ingathering at the year's end. 
the feast of in gathering. So this feast, it says what? They says the of the first fruits of the wheat harvest and the feast of in gathering at the year's end. So what we're reading here with the feast of the feast of the feast of first fruits. That's the day of Pentecost when we're getting what we're harvesting our crops, the first fruits of our crops. You understand? So the Lord is using a similitude. Okay, get that in uh, Hosea twelve and ten. The Lord is using a similitude. He's explained. He's talking about he's talking about farming, but he's not really talking about farming. He's talking about He's, he's using farming as a metaphor to explain his word, his wisdom, his understanding. Okay? Hosea 12 and 10. Read that. Hosea chapter 12, verse 10. Go ahead. I have also spoken by the prophets. Mm -hmm. And I have multiplied visions and used similitudes by the ministry of the prophets. You see that? He says he used similitudes by the ministry of the prophets. Similitudes is what? Parables. Parables is illustrated stories, allegories, metaphors. So that's what we're reading. So what we're reading, uh, when, we, when we read about the first fruits, yes, it's talking about the first fruits, which is the feast day that we observe, but there's a spiritual understanding behind that. You understand? Which the Lord goes into what? His understanding, his wisdom that he bestowed upon his sons and daughters. Okay? So go back to where he was at now. Matthew 21, verse 34 again. Matthew chapter 21, verse 34. And when the time of the fruit drew near. The time of the said, fruit that drew near is the time of harvest. Is the time of harvest to harvest the fruits that are coming from the vineyard. Okay, read. He sent his servants to the husbandmen. Mm -hmm. That they might receive the fruits of it. That they might receive the fruits of the, 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 fruits of the vineyard. Okay. The fruits of the vineyard, hold this. Give me the book of Luke 10 and 2. Luke chapter 10 and verse 2. Let's get there. Luke chapter 10, verse 2. Go ahead. Therefore said he unto them, mm -hmm. the harvest truly is great. The harvest is great. The harvest truly is great. You understand? The where is the harvest? In the vineyard. What is the vineyard? The house of Israel. You understand? What are we harvesting? The fruits of the vineyard, which is what? Understanding. That's a metaphor. I'm going to explain that in a minute. Go ahead. But the laborers are few. But the laborers are few to work in the vineyard, to harvest the, the crops. You understand? To gather the fruits of the vineyard. Read. Pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest, mm -hmm. that he would send forth laborers into his harvest. You see that thing? So we must pray for more laborers to come into the harvest, that he would send forth laborers into his harvest, because this is the Lord's vineyard. So it's his harvest. You understand? So brothers and sisters coming into the truth, you the fruits. You understand? As you learn the laws of God, guess what? It's going to also produce fruit in you. Understand that thing. Let's get there. Second Exodus 9, verse 31. Second Ezra chapter 9, verse 31. Mm -hmm. For behold, I saw my law in you. You see that? I saw my law in you. The, the you is us. Who's us? The vineyard. Because we are the Lord's vineyard. So the law, the most High God is saying, he planted his law in us. So we the vineyard. Okay, go ahead. And it shall bring fruit in you. You see what he's really talking about? So he's not actually talking about actual fruits. Although... We are explaining the fruits of the feast of first fruits and all the years talk about fruits, but it's also a metaphor. The spiritual understanding behind that is a metaphor to explain how he gives understanding to the 12 tribes of Israel. Read that again, verse 31. Second Ezra chapter 9, verse 31. Read. For behold, I saw my law in you, mm -hmm. and it shall bring fruit in you. You see that? It shall it the laws that the Lord the, the laws that the Lord has sown in us, which we are the vineyard, is gonna bring fruit in us. Go ahead. And ye shall be honored in it forever. We are going to be honored in the fruit that will come from the law that is sown in us by the most high God, because we the Lord's vineyard, we are his harvest. Okay, so let's understand what is the fruit. Get that. Galatians 5 is 22. Galatians chapter 5, verse 22. Go ahead. But the fruit of the Spirit is love. 
That's the fruit right there. So the fruit that he's talking about is the fruit of the spirit. The fruit is making reference to is the fruit of the spirit. Let's get that in John 6, 63. Let's get the fruits of the spirit. What is the, what is the spirit? Okay. John chapter 6, verse 63. Come on. It is the spirit that quickeneth. Mm -hmm. The flesh profited nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. So the words that Christ spoke unto us, that's the spirit, okay? So let's go back. Go back to where was that? Galatians 5, verse 22 again. Galatians chapter 5, verse 22. Read. But the fruit of the spirit is love. You see that? The fruit of the spirit is love. So what is the spirit? The word of God. The words that Christ spoke unto us. That's the spirit, okay? Come on, is what? But the fruit of the spirit is love. The, the fruit of the spirit is love. The first fruit of the spirit is love. Let's get that. First John 5 and 3. Let's get the first fruit of the spirit. Okay. First John chapter 5 verse 3. Mm -hmm. For this is the love of God. Come on. That we keep his commandments. And his commandments are not grievous. So the, the first fruit of the spirit is love. Is the keeping of God's commandments. That's the first fruit of the spirit. Okay, go back to Galatians now. Chapter 5, verse 22. Galatians chapter 5, verse 22. Mm -hmm. But the fruit of the spirit is love. The fruit of the spirit, the first fruit of the spirit is the keeping of God's commandments. Read. Joy. Joy. The second fruit, the second fruit of the spirit is joy. Get that in Nehemiah 8, verse 10. Nehemiah chapter 8, verse 10. Watch this. Nehemiah chapter 8, verse 10. Read. Then he said unto them, Go your way, eat the fat, and mm -hmm. drink the sweet, and send portions unto them for whom nothing is prepared. So now what, what is he saying? He says, then, then said he unto, Go your way, eat the fat. Mm. Listen, the fat here goes into the understanding of this Bible. Drink the sweet. The sweet is talk about the understanding of this Bible. Understand that. And send portions unto them for whom nothing is prepared. Meaning our brothers and sisters, they must receive the fat and the sweet. You understand? That's why it says, and send portions unto them for whom nothing is prepared. Because they need the fat, they need the sweet of this Bible. You understand? Go ahead. For this day is holy unto our Lord. Mm -hmm. Neither be ye sorry. Don't be sorry. Meaning don't, don't feel sorry for yourself. Don't be grimy, you understand? Don't have that spirit of um, mm, nobody wants to talk to you. You're just hectic. Nobody can talk to you about nothing. Why? Because the fruit of the spirit is not there. Go ahead. For the joy of the Lord is your strength. That's it right there. For the joy of the Lord is your strength. If you don't have joy in this truth, guess what? You're not going to be able to survive it. Because you need to have joy. Because we're catching hell left, right, and center. You understand? On top, underneath. We catching hell all over. So guess what? You better have joy in this truth. You better praise the Lord on a daily basis. Throughout the day, praise the Lord for bringing you into this truth. Because guess what? Whatever trial that you're going through, yes, you can keep all the commandments, but you don't have the spirit of joy. You are not going to be able to survive that trial because you're going to be mad. You're going to be upset. You're not going to want to continue. But when you have the spirit of joy, the joy of the Lord is your strength. You're going to have strength to overcome that trial. You men and women understand that? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Now let's go back. Galatians 5, verse 22 again. Galatians chapter 5, verse 22. Mm -hmm. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, mm. joy. Come on. Peace. Peace. So we must have peace. So the third fruit of the Spirit is peace. We must have peace among ourselves. Now watch this. Hmm. A Bible now. Give me that in Zechariah chapter 11, verse 14. Watch this. Zechariah chapter 11. He says, we must have peace amongst ourselves. We must have peace one to another. Zechariah chapter 11. Let's start at verse... Zechariah chapter 11. Start at verse 7. We're going to read down. Watch this. Zechariah chapter 11, verse 7. Read. And I will feed the flock of slaughter 
even you. Mm -hmm. O poor of the flock. The flock of the slaughter is us, even us, the poor of the flock, the 12 tribes of Israel. Go ahead. And I took unto me two staves. Mm -hmm. The one I called beauty. That's Judah. Come on. And the other I called bands. That's Israel. So beauty and bands is Judah and Israel. Come on. And I fed the flock. And I fed the flock using the prophets. Okay. Now jump down to verse. Jump down to verse. Uh, but read verse 10. Zechariah chapter 11 verse 10. Go ahead. And I took my stuff, even beauty. Beauty, that's Judah, come on. And cut it asunder. Because we got destroyed. We also, Judah went into captivity. The Lord cut it asunder, come on. That I might break my covenant, which I had made with all the people. You see that thing? Jump down to verse 12 now. Verse 12. And you I know said what? unto them, um now let us read, let's read verse 14 remember it says he's gonna destroy judah also right which is beauty in verse 10 now read verse 14 zachariah chapter 11 verse 14 read then i cut asunder mine other stuff mm -hmm. even pens you see that then i cut asunder mine other stuff the first stuff was cast asunder in verse 10 read verse 10 again so we get it Zechariah chapter 11, verse 10. Read. And I took my staff, even beauty, and cut it asunder, mm -hmm. that I might break my covenant, which I had made with all the people. You, with all the people of the southern kingdom, Judah, Benjamin, and Levi. Now jump down to verse 14 now. Verse 14. Mm -hmm. Then I cut asunder my other stuff. The other sheep I have. That's what he's talking about here. Then I cut asunder mine other stuff. Go ahead. Even what? Even bands. Even bands. That's Israel now. Northern kingdom. Read. That I might break the brotherhood between Judah and Israel. So now beauty and bands, they're explained in verse 14. That I may break the brotherhood between what? That I might break the brotherhood between Judah and Israel. You see that? He broke the brotherhood between Judah and Israel. So now there was, there was no peace among us. There was no peace among the 12 tribes of Israel because the Lord did that thing. Now watch this. Give me the book of Ephesians real quick. Ephesians 2. Okay. Ephesians chapter 2. Ephesians 2. Let's start at verse. Hmm. Read verse 12. Watch this. Start of verse 11. We're going to read down. Yes, sir. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 11. Go ahead. Wherefore, remember that ye being in time past Gentiles in the flesh. Because the northern kingdom were in the time in time past, there were Gentiles in the flesh. Meaning what? By nationality, they were Israelites. But by customs, they were keeping and maintaining the customs of the Greeks. Okay? Because Ephesus, that's where it is. It's in Greece. You understand? So northern kingdom tribes, they were observing the custom of the Greeks. So that's why it says you were in time past Gentiles in the flesh. Because they also were not circumcising their children. Okay, Timothy is one of them. Read. Who are called uncircumcision by that which is called the circumcision in the flesh made by hands. The uncircumcision is northern kingdom. The circumcision is the southern kingdom. The proof of that is in Galatians. No, no Romans 3 and 1 and 2. Read that. Romans 3 verse 1. Now, I don't want to go there, but let's just get it. Romans 3 verse 1. Romans. Chapter 3, verse 1. Mm -hmm. What advantage then had the Jew? Had the southern kingdom, which is called the circumcision, read. Or what profit is there of circumcision? Uh -huh. What profit is there of circumcision? Because the Jews, the southern kingdom were called the circumcision because they still kept the commandments. They're, they're, you know, you understand? Judah, for the most part, we still kept the commandments, okay? But when it comes to northern kingdom, the majority of them, they kept not the commandments of the Mosai. Okay, that's where they were called the uncircumcision. Go back physically and spiritually, they were not circumcised. Go back to Ephesians 2. Read verse 12 now. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 12. Mm -hmm. That at that time, you were without Christ. You see that? So northern kingdom, at that time, you were without Christ. Now, all 12 of, 12 of Israel, when the Lord cast asunder Judah, he cut asunder the other stuff, which is northern kingdom, 
all Israel was without Christ. Go ahead. Being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel. You see now, you see, we became aliens from the commonwealth of Israel because we were kicked out of our homeland in 70 AD. Read. And strangers from the covenant of promise. You see that? Now we became strangers from the covenant of promise. Hold that. Give me that in First Peter 2. We became strangers to the covenant of promise, the promise that was made to our forefathers, uh, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Get that in uh, First Peter chapter 2. Um, read verse 10. Start at verse 9. We're going to read 9 through 11. First Peter chapter 2 verse 9. Come on. But ye are a chosen generation, mm -hmm. a royal priesthood, right? and holy nation, a peculiar people, that ye should show forth the praises of him who has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. That's the same thing we read in Isaiah 60 verse 1 and 2. He called us out of darkness into his marvelous light that we may be illuminated. You understand? So this goes into, is also going into northern kingdom, the scattered Israelites. Read verse 10 now, come on. Which in time past were not a people. You see that? Which in time past were Gentiles in the flesh. That's what we read in Ephesians 2 verse 11. Which in time past were not a people because we were what? Gentiles. The Lord is, when he says you are not God's people, what are you called? A Gentile. So in time past, Gentiles in the flesh by that which is called the uncircumcision, where well, that which is called the circumcision, calling the uncircumcision, saying, you Gentiles in the flesh. Go ahead. But are now the people of God. You see that? But now are now the people of God. Now you are being brought back into the fold. Read again. Which had not obtained mercy, mm -hmm. but now have obtained mercy. You see that? For the Lord will have mercy on Jacob. Come on and will yet choose Israel. Read. Dearly beloved, I beseech you as strangers and pilgrims. You see that? As strangers and pilgrims. We were strangers from what were aliens from the commonwealth of Israel. Okay? Read. Abstain from fleshly lusts, mm -hmm. which war against the soul. Because when we have a gentle mind state, guess what? We are going to be what? We are not going to abstain from the lust, fleshly lusts, which war against our souls. But now that the Lord has mercy upon us, now we have, we have what? We can fight now. We can fight back. Go back to Ephesians 2. Read verse 12 again. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 12. Come on. That at that time, you were without Christ. Mm -hmm. Being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel. You see that? We were aliens from the commonwealth of Israel. And what? And strangers from the covenant of promise. The promise that was made to our forefather Abraham. And strangers from the covenants, the covenants, old and new covenant. Read. Having no hope mm -hmm. and without God in the world. That's why today our people is hopeless because why? They're worshiping white Jesus. That's why our people have no hope. They are hopeless. That's why we here as the prophets of the most High God back on this earth. Read. But now in Christ Jesus, mm -hmm. ye who sometimes were far off are made nigh by the blood of Christ. Because Christ's blood was able to bring all 12 tribes of Israel together as one. Okay? Why? Keep going. Watch this. Watch how this comes together. Come on. For he is our peace. He is our what? For he is our peace. Because he is our peace. Because there was no peace between us. Judah and Israel. Even among the tribes. Even among Northern Kingdom. Among Southern Kingdom. There is no peace. That's why we're using the word of God to bring peace among us. Okay? For he is our what? Read that again. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 14. Come on. For he is our peace. Mm -hmm. Who has made both one. He has made both Judah and Israel one. One body. One, one body of the 12 tribes of Israel. Come on. And has broken down the middle wall of partition between us. You see that? So the Lord broke, he's, he broken down the middle wall of partition between us because what? We was at war after Solomon died when the kingdom split into two. Read. Having abolished in his flesh the enmity. You see that? The fightings, the wars, the hatred amongst us. You understand? In his flesh when he died on the cross. Read. Even the law of commandments contained in ordinances. You see that thing? 
He abolished what? The old covenant of animal sacrifice that we may now be under him, under grace, to get our minds right. Read. For to make in himself of twain one new that? man. To make in himself of twain, of two, Judah and Israel, you understand, beauty and bands. Make in himself of twain one uh -huh. new man. One new man, come on. So making peace. So making peace. You understand? The fruit of the spirit, peace is one of them. We must have peace one, one among another. We must have peace amongst each other. And Christ is our peace to bring peace among the 12 tribes of the nation of Israel. Because guess what? Right now, we hate and despise each other as a nation. That's why Christ had to die so we get rid of all that garbage so we can what? We can move as one, one body, one mind, one spirit, one judgment. Okay? So now, go back to Galatians chapter 5, verse 22. Galatians chapter 5, verse 22. Read. But the fruit of the spirit is love. Mm -hmm. Joy, peace, long suffering, peace. Gentleness. So the peace, the peace that was restored among us, long suffering, meaning what? Patience. Get that in Sarak 2. Sarak 2, real quick. The fruit of the spirit is love because the long suffering, guess what? You know what? Give me second Peter 3. Watch this. Second Peter chapter 3, verse 15. I'm going to show you something with this. Second Peter chapter 3, verse 15. Second Peter chapter 3, verse 15. Come on. And account that the long suffering of our Lord is salvation. You see that? The long suffering of our Lord is salvation. Whose salvation? Ours. So the Lord is long suffering to us what? So we may be delivered. So that fruit of the spirit, which is long suffering, the Lord has that with us. The Lord still has that with us. He's long suffering to us what? So he can give us a chance to get the kingdom. So guess what? We must be long suffering one towards another. The same way the Lord is long suffering towards us. We must be long suffering one towards another. We must have that spirit of patience. Read that again. Second Peter chapter 3 verse 15. Mm -hmm. An account that the long suffering of our Lord is salvation. The long suffering of our Lord is salvation. Watch this. Give me, jump up, actually, jump up to, um, yep, jump up to verse 9. That's the one I want. That's the one. This, this goes in, the, the verse 15 goes with this. We read verse 9 now. Come on. Second Peter chapter 3, verse 9. Come on. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise. He's coming back. Understand that. Read. As some men count slackness. As some men count slackness, meaning the Lord is not going to come back. You understand? They've been saying this ever since he was born, that the Lord is coming back. He's coming back. Concerning the promise he made to our forefathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, that he will deliver us and give us the kingdom and will rule forever and live forever. Okay, come on. But is long suffering to us what? You see that? The Lord is long suffering to us what? Who's the us what? The 12 tribes of Israel. The Lord is long suffering to us what? Go ahead. Not willing that any should perish. You don't want nobody to die, but it is what it is. It is written. Go ahead. But that all should come to repentance. But that all the, right, the righteous remnant might come to repentance. The righteous remnant might not pay, must not perish but must, must come to repentance. They must, be, no, they must repent. Now read verse 15 now. Again. Second Peter chapter 3 verse 15. Mm -hmm. An account that the long suffering of our Lord is salvation. Come on, there is salvation. So the long suffering of, the, of our Lord towards us, to us what, is salvation. The Lord does not want anybody to be destroyed of the 12 tribes of Israel, of the righteous remnant. He doesn't want them to be destroyed. That's what he's saying. So that's why he says he's long suffering to us what? So this long suffering, which is the fruit of the spirit, the Lord has that. So guess what? We must have that and walk after his footsteps. The long suffering will only come through trial. You're not going to be have, have the spirit of long suffering, but you don't have a trial. And when the trial comes, you bail out. No, you're not going to have that spirit. So get that. Get that in Sarak 2 now. Let's get Sarak 2. 
Okay, Sarak 2 verse 14. Watch this. Ecclesiastes chapter 2 verse 14. Read. Woe unto you that have lost patience. You see that? Law unto you that have lost patience. That's the long suffering. Woe unto you that have lost patience. Okay, read. And what will you do when the Lord shall visit you? You see that thing? What are you going to do when the Lord pays, pays you a visit? When the Lord returns? It, because you failed in patience. You must repent. You must recover yourself that you don't fail in patience. Because what you want to do when the Lord makes his second coming? Jump up to verse 11. Watch this. Ecclesiastes chapter 2 verse 11. Read. For the Lord is full of compassion and mercy. Mm. Long suffering. What? Long suffering. Long suffering. The Lord is full of compassion and mercy. Long suffering to us what? That any, that the righteous remnant might come to salvation. Read. And very pitiful. Very pitiful of what? Of those that repent and keep his commandments. Go ahead. And forgiveth sins. Mm -hmm. And saveth in time of affliction. In, in time of affliction. When there's an affliction upon you, guess what? The Lord will deliver you, but you must be long suffering. You must have patience, okay? Because that's what the Lord is teaching us through these trials that he bestows upon us, okay? So go back to Galatians 5. Galatians chapter 5, verse 22. Read. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, mm -hmm. joy, mm -hmm. peace, long suffering. Long suffering, come on. Gentleness. Gentleness. Watch this. Give me. Give me the book of Proverbs real quick. Proverbs. Gentleness. Whew. Ah, my Bible is definitely giving up the ghost on this one. Um, get that. Get that in uh, Proverbs chapter 15, verse 1. Watch this. Proverbs chapter 15, verse 1. Read. A soft answer turneth away wrath. You see that? A soft answer will turn away wrath. Okay. A soft answer will turn away wrath. That's what the Lord is. That's the fruit of the Spirit, by the way. Go ahead. But grievous words stir up anger. But the grievous words will stir up anger. Go ahead. Watch this. The tongue of the wise uses knowledge aright. You see that? The tongue of the wise, they use knowledge the right way. They, they apply the laws of God accordingly. Go ahead. But the mouth of fools poureth out foolishness. Meaning what? Things that are against the laws of God. Foolishness. Read. Jump down to verse 4 now. Watch this. Verse 4. A wholesome tongue is a tree of life. You see that? A wholesome tongue is a tree of life. Meaning when you talk to the brother, guess what? Your spirit, your spirit is refined. You understand? You talk to a brother, your spirit is exalted. Why? Because they have a wholesome tongue, which is the tree of life. Go ahead. But perverseness therein is a breach in the spirit. Is a, The spirit is broken. Read verse 7 now. Proverbs chapter 15 verse 7. Mm-hmm. The lips of the wise disperse knowledge. Because the lips of the wise will disperse the laws of God. Wisdom, counsel. Go ahead. But the heart of the foolish doeth not so. The heart of the foolish does not do so because why? They are void of judgment and understanding and wisdom of the Lord. Okay. So go back to Galatians 5 verse 22. Galatians chapter 5 verse 22. Mm -hmm. But the fruit of the spirit is love, joy. Peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith. Goodness, faith. The goodness goes into Romans 7, verse 14. Let's get that. Romans 7, verse 12. Real quick. I need to go back to the parable, but I'm still on topic. I have not forgot that, that I have not taken a tangent. This is on topic. Okay, Romans 7, verse 12. Romans chapter 7, verse 12. Mm -hmm. Wherefore, the law is holy. Read. And the commandment holy and just and good. You see that? And just and good. The law is good. The commandment is good. And it is just. Okay? It says, and faith. Watch this. Give me that in 2nd Ezra's 9. They say, faith is another fruit of the spirit. You must have faith. So all these characteristics that we're reading here, you guess what? When you make a list, you must see if you have all these. You, your character fits this. If it doesn't, guess what? You better pray for that. You better apply yourself to get these. Understand that. 
Second Ezra 9. Second Ezra chapter 9. I know I'm moving fast, but I need to get to the, I need to finish the, the parable tonight. Um, second Ezra 9. Read verse, read verse 7. Second Ezra chapter 9, verse 7. Mm -hmm. And everyone that shall be saved mm -hmm. and shall be able to escape by his works. By his what? By his works. So everyone that is going to be delivered, everyone that's going to be saved, it says, shall be able to escape by his works. That means you must have works in this truth. You must put in work. Okay, go ahead. Meaning the commandments of the Lord. You must apply the commandments. Do labor into the, in, the, in the Lord's vineyard. Okay, read. And by faith. And by what? And by faith. Read. Whereby he have believed. You see that whereby he have believed and by faith. So it's works and faith which makes you uh, which makes you a believer. And because of that, you're going to get delivered. That's what he's saying right there. Revelation 14 verse 12 real quick. Let's get that. Revelation chapter 14 verse 12. Read. Here is the patience of the saints. Uh -huh. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. You see that? Here are they that keep God's commandments and the faith of Christ. You see what he's saying? Faith and works, whereby he have believed on Christ. Okay? Go back to Galatians now. 5, verse 23. Galatians chapter 5, verse 23. Mm -hmm. Meekness. Temperance. What? Meekness. So meekness goes into what? Obedience. Meekness is obedience. Get that in Numbers 12 about our forefather Moses. Numbers chapter 12, read verse 3. Numbers chapter 12, verse 3. Go ahead. Now the man Moses was very meek above all the men which were upon the face of the earth. You see that? It says the man Moses was very meek. Very meek. He was extremely obedient to the Most High God above all the men which were upon the face of the earth. Give me that in Matthew chapter 5. Read verse 5. Read verse 5. Matthew chapter 5, verse 5. Mm -hmm. Blessed are the meek. Blessed are the meek. Blessed are those that submit themselves to the laws of God. Read. For they shall inherit the earth. They shall inherit the people upon the earth. The kingdom of heaven on earth. We will inherit the earth. That's what he's saying right there. Zephaniah 2 and 1. Zephaniah chapter 2, verse 1. Go ahead. Gather yourselves together, yea, gather together, O nation not desired. He says we must gather together, O nation that we are not desired, because all nations, they hate and despise us. The Lord says we must gather ourselves together. Jump down to verse 3 now. Watch this. Verse 3. Seek ye the Lord, all ye meek of the earth. You see that? Seek ye the Lord, all ye meek of the earth. Remember, it says, blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth, the kingdom of heaven on earth. Go ahead. Which have wrought his judgment. We have wrought the Lord's judgment. Come on. Seek righteousness. Mm -hmm. Seek meekness. You see that we must seek the laws of God. We must seek to submit ourselves to the righteousness of the most High God. What is Zephaniah saying here? Hold this. Give me that in Romans 10 verse 1. Watch this real quick. Romans 10 verse 1. Romans 10. You know what? Read Romans 10 verse 3. Let's just get to the point here. Romans chapter 10, verse 3. Mm -hmm. For they being ignorant of God's righteousness. So now the, those that are not the meek, you understand? The rebellious, they are not going to submit themselves to the righteousness of God. Go ahead. And going about to establish their own righteousness. They have gone about to establish their own. They have gone about to establish their own righteousness. Go ahead have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. You see that? But the meek will submit themselves to the righteousness of God. That's what the meek will do. Okay, go back to Zephaniah 2 verse 3 again. Zephaniah chapter 2 verse 3. Go ahead. Seek ye the Lord, all ye meek of the earth, mm -hmm. which have wrought his judgment. Seek righteousness. Seek meekness. Read. 
It may be he shall be hid in the day of the Lord's anger. He says, it may be that ye may be hid in the day of the Lord's anger. Because when we seek righteousness, we seek meekness, we are going to be hid in the day of the Lord's anger. Get that in Psalms 91. Psalms 91 verse 1. Psalms chapter 91 verse 1. Read. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. You see that? That we may be hid in the day of the Lord's anger. So we do him, where, where are we going to be dwelling? We're going to dwell in the secret place of the Most High. The secret place of the Most High God is this right here. Get that into Deuteronomy 29, 29, so we understand the secret place of the Most High. Deuteronomy chapter 29, verse 29. Go ahead. The secret things belong unto the Lord our God. The secret things belong unto the Most High God. Come on. But those things which are revealed belong unto us and to our children forever. Mm -hmm. That we may do all the words of this law. That we may what? That we may do all the words of this law. So the secret things that belong to the Lord, you understand? It says the secret things belong as unto the Lord our God. But the things which are revealed by the Most High God, they belong unto us and to our children forever, that we may do all the words of this law. So guess what? To hide yourself under the, the shadow, the secret place of the Lord, you keep his commandments. And when you keep his commandments, those secret things that belong to the Lord will be revealed unto you, which are the wondrous things that are hidden in his law, according to Psalms 119 verse 18. So let's go back. Galatians 5 verse 23 again. Galatians chapter 5 verse 23. Read. Meekness. Temperance. Temperance. That's mean, meaning what? Being serious. Meekness and temperance. Get that in Titus 2 verse 1. Titus chapter 2 verse 1. Watch this. Titus chapter 2 verse 1. Go ahead. But speak thou the things which become sound doctrine. Now remember, this is a, there's a colon here. Excuse me. It says, speak thou the things which become sound doctrine. Get that in Proverbs 4 verse 2 again. Verse 2. Not again, but yeah. Proverbs 4 verse 2. Let's see what the doctrine is. The sound doctrine. Proverbs. Chapter 4, verse 2. Read. For I give you good doctrine. Forsake you not my law. So the good doctrine is the laws of God. So let's go back. Titus 2, verse 1 again. Titus, chapter 2, verse 1. Mm -hmm. But speak thou the things which become sound doctrine. He says, speak the things that become the laws of God. Go ahead, watch this. That the age men be sober. Because the laws of God will teach you to be sober because that is a sound doctrine. Come on. Grave. Serious. Okay, come on. Temperate. Don't take no nonsense. Be serious about this truth. So the laws of God, which is a sound doctrine, will teach you temperance. Right? Sound in faith. Mm -hmm. In charity. In peace. In patience. Now, what we just read, these are also food of, the fruits of the spirit. So, go back to Galatians now. Chapter 5, verse 23. Galatians, chapter 5, verse 23. Read. Meekness, temperance. Mm -hmm. Against such, there is no law. Against those fruits of the Spirit, there is no law against these. You apply these things, you're good in the sight of the Most High God. You understand? The job is to do what is to maintain those patterns of good works. Is to maintain them. Okay, which is the hardest part. Now, watch this. Now, let's go back. Go back to 2 Nessus 9, verse 31. 2 Nessus, chapter 9, verse 31. Read. For behold, I saw my law in you. Uh -huh. And it shall bring fruit in you. It shall bring fruit in you. The fruit of the spirit. The law that the Lord said God is sowing in our hearts. Guess what? it's going to bring fruit in you because it's not sown on stony ground. Like you read in the parable in Mark 4. Okay, go ahead. And ye shall be honored in it forever. You shall be honored in it forever. Okay, go back to Mark 12 now. Mark 12, verse 
Verse 2 again. Mark chapter 12, verse 2. And at the season, he sent to the husbandman a servant that he might receive from the husbandman of the fruit of the vineyard. You see that he sent, he sent a servant, you understand, that he might receive from the husbandman of the fruit of the vineyard because the husbandman's job is to do what? Is to give the servants the fruits of the vineyard, which is what? The understanding of this Bible, the fruits of the spirit that we read in Galatians, the fifth chapter. But what, what happened next? Verse 3 through 5 is going to be sum, summarized in Matthew 21. Read verse 3 now. Come on. Mark chapter 12 verse 3. Mm -hmm. And they caught him and beat him and sent him away empty. So now the husbandman, instead of teaching the, the servant that the Lord has sent, guess what? They caught the servant. They beat the servant. They sent the servant away empty. Go ahead. And again, he sent unto them another servant. And at him, they cast stones and wounded him in the head mm. and sent him away shamefully handled. Shamefully handled. So another servant, what did they do? They cast stones at him. They wounded him in the head and he was kicked out shamefully. Okay, go ahead. Meaning what? By the doctrine that was being taught. The law, the doctrine that it was not sound doctrine. It was in the commandments of the law that was being taught. Okay like the Christian church, like some Israelite camps. Okay, go ahead. And again, he sent another, and mm. him they killed. You see that? He sent another seven, him they put, the, they put to death. Read. And many others, beating some and killing some. Now, what you want to understand here is that the Lord sent the servants to go and learn from the husbandmen of the fruit of the vineyard, and guess what? They destroyed the people that came to learn. Hold this. Now give me the book of Matthew 21 now, verse 35. Matthew chapter 21, verse 35. Read. Right. And the husbandman took his servants and beat one and killed another and stoned another. You see that? So they beat, they killed, and they stoned. Beat, stoned, wounded, and killed. That's what happened to the servants that were sent to hear the word of God. Okay, go ahead. Okay. He sent other servants more than the first. Mm -hmm. And they did unto them likewise. And they did unto them likewise. So with this parable is, there's more layers here. I'm not going to go into that. Read that again. Verse, verse 36. Matthew chapter 21, verse 36. Again, he sent other servants more than the first. And they did unto them likewise. They did unto those servants that were sent, that was more than the first. He says, they did unto them likewise. They beat them, they killed, and they stoned them. Watch this. Let's deal with the first, with the first one. You see here, Matthew is summarizing it. You understand what Christ said. Watch this. Give me Luke 12, verse 45. He says, they beat one. Luke 12, 45. Let's get there. Luke chapter 12, verse 45. Read. But... And if that servant say in his heart, my Lord delayeth his coming mm -hmm. and shall begin to beat the men servants and maidens. He said, whoa, whoa, whoa. He shall begin to do what? And shall begin to beat the men servants and maidens. He shall begin to beat the men servants and maidens. Meaning what? When you come into this truth, you are being raised up to be a leader in Israel. Your character is going to be under a microscope. I'm going to tell you straight right now. Your character, your disposition, the way you move, your conversation, you understand? If you are easily influenced, you're losing a spine and all that, guess what? Me, I'm going to watch you like a hawk. Why? Because if I don't, this is what's going to take place. Read that again, verse 45. Luke chapter 12, verse 45. Read. But, and if that servant say in his heart, Mm. My Lord delayed his coming. My Lord delayed his coming. Meaning what? He's not, the Lord is not coming. He's delaying. The Christ is not going to come back now. The Lord is saying the kingdom of heaven is at hand. He's going to come like a thief. So now, mm, that's a heavy statement. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Some heavy stuff. He says, my Lord delayed his coming and shall begin to beat the men servants and maid maidens. Meaning to abuse the brothers and sisters. To ill treat brothers and sisters, to do to do what? To lord over them. The, the key is 
if 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 something simple as okay hmm brother i want you to um to handle such and such you don't handle it right and because you don't handle it or you do but you don't handle it the right way right the lord here is saying when this thing is dealt with the way to make sure that the men seven and the maidens are not beaten we use the word of god to cancel them you must use the word of god to cancel them you understand the job some of you've got anger issues and you're not fixing them full of anger very rebellious you understand some of you hate authority you hate being told what to do you did it you do it at your job you think you can also do it in Israel you be wrong about that you understand because if you hate correction law and order now there is no way you're going to be over nobody because why you're going to beat the men servant you're going to abuse the sisters too that's what's going to take place you understand that will not take place that will not happen not in here maybe in some other camps but not in SOC read that again verse 45 verse 45 Luke chapter 12 verse 45 Read, but and if that servant say in his heart, "My Lord delayeth his coming," and shall begin to beat the men servants and maidens, mm. and to eat and drink and to be drunken, you see that don't care about the gospel, don't care about the gospel at all, because this goes into what the fulfilling of the lust of the flesh, eating and drinking and being drunken. This is all the lust of the flesh. Okay, so. That's what he's going into when he says they beat the men servants in a beat one. That goes into what? Not being able, not feeding the flock. Not using the word of God. You understand? Window shopping on YouTube. Yeah, this will keep coming up. Why? Because if you're doing that, you're not sitting down to study. The Lord to open your eyes. This is what you're going to do. You're going to beat the men servants and the maidens. And you're going to begin to eat and drink and to be drunken. You're not going to care about the mission. That's what the Lord is saying right there. Okay. Now, um, go back. Matthew 21. Matthew 21, verse 35. Read that again. Matthew chapter 21, verse 35. Read. And the husbandman took his servants and beat one and killed another and, and stole another. And beat one and killed another. And, and beat stole one. another. And killed another and stoned another. Okay, these are the servants that the Lord was sending to the husband men. What did they do? They beat one, they killed another, and they stoned another. Okay, give me Matthew chapter 10, verse 17. Let's start there. Matthew 10, verse 17. Matthew chapter 10, verse 17. Read. But beware of men. Mm. For they will deliver you up to the councils. Read. And they will scourge you in their synagogues. You see what the Bible is saying? It says, beware of evil men. Which men? Evil men. Wicked, demonic negras. For they will deliver you up to the councils. Meaning what? What is Christ explaining here? He's explaining betrayal. The same thing that I was going over last night. Yes. Christ is explaining betrayal here. It says, and they will scourge you in their synagogues. Watch this. Hmm. Hold this. Give me Matthew 24. Why must we be aware of these men? Matthew chapter 24 and read verse 9. Watch this. Matthew chapter 24 verse 9. Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted. You see that? Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted. They're going to deliver you up to the councils. Okay, go ahead. To be afflicted. Read. And shall kill you. And they're going to put you to death. And when they do it, they're going to think they are doing God's service. Get that in John 16. John 16 and verse 1 and 2. Watch this. John chapter 16 verse 1. Mm -hmm. These things have I spoken unto you, that ye should not be offended. Go ahead. They shall put you out of the synagogues. They're going to put you out of the synagogues. Okay, go ahead. Yea, the time cometh that whosoever killeth you will think that he doeth God's service. You see that? Whosoever killeth you. This goes into hatred also. This goes into hatred. 
Whosoever killeth you, they're going to think they are doing the service of the Most High. So go back. Matthew 24, read verse 9 again. Matthew chapter 24, verse 9. Mm. Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you. And ye shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. We're going to be hated of all nations for Christ's sake. Because we follow after him, we keep the commandments because Christ was a nationalist. Christ only cares about, he cared about his nation and his nation only. We're doing the same thing. we also going to get hated. Understand that. Read. And then shall many be offended. Stop right there. You see this part right here? And then shall many be offended. The many that will be offended is not necessarily the other nations. The other nations we know, they are going to be offended. But this offended here is talking about beware of men in the congregation. He says, they are the ones that are going to be offended. You ever seen you correct a brother? The class go out. The brother, when he talks to you, he's mad as hell. You can see he's trying to hide it, but you can see he's mad. They fall under this category. Then shall they many be offended. He's offended now. Or those that get offended when this Bible coming out, those are betrayers. Those that are offended, those are betrayers. Understand that. It's not if, it's not maybe, it's a 100% effect. Those are betrayers. Because it says, blessed is he whosoever shall not be offended in me. But the brother will just be offended, just be mad as hell, trying to hide it. But we can see, brother, you mad. You mad, you mad, you mad. You just mad. <laughs> hmm? That's what we're reading here. Come on, brother. Get it together. Let go, of the, in, let go of the evil in your heart and repent. Get your mind right. Because if you don't, you're going to fall under you. This, this is the next thing that will happen next. Read verse 10 again. I'm going to show you something. Matthew chapter 24, verse 10. And then shall many be offended and shall betray one another. You see what happens next? Because he's offended, this is what happens next. The betrayal. The, the apostle Paul, he says, he won the church for the space of three years. Why am I bringing this up? Because the Lord keeps sending me here. Because guess what? Something, I'm going to tell you right now. This manyofonyofo business, the Lord will blow that spot up. I'm going to tell you straight. Understand that. Make sure you check yourself before you wreck yourself. Read that again. Verse 10. Matthew chapter 24, verse 10. And then shall many be offended and shall betray one another mm -hmm. and shall hate one another. And guess what? Is being offended. You see, these are stages. First, they become offended at the word of God. And now they begin to hate the man of God bringing the word out. Then the next thing is betrayal. The next thing is hatred. Jump down to verse 12. Watch this. Verse 12. Mm -hmm. And because iniquity shall abound. Because what is the iniquity? They don't want to repent from their sin. So instead of being repenting, the spirit of Cain jumps on them. You see how this works? Read that again, verse 12. Matthew chapter 24, verse 12. And because iniquity shall abound. Because iniquity shall abound. What is the iniquity that is abounding in them? Is what? Hatred. Envy. Being offended. You understand? Not having the fruit of the spirit because the, because what? Because iniquity shall abound in their spirit. They are not going to repent from it. Go ahead. The love of many shall work cold. The love of many will work cold because what is the first fruit of the spirit? It is love. Keeping of the commandments. So when it says the love of many shall work cold, meaning the love of many keeping God's commandments is going to work cold. They're going to say to hell with God's laws. You understand? That's what they're going to say. That's what the Lord is saying right there. Now. Let's go back. Let's go back. I think I was. Let's go back to Matthew. Because I never finished that. Go back to Matthew 21. Yes, um, Matthew. Matthew 21. We're going to go to um, uh, Matthew 10. Because I know we're in Matthew 10. I have not forgotten. Read that again. Matthew 21. Um, verse 35 again. Matthew chapter 21, verse 35. Mm -hmm. And the husbandman took his servants and beat one and killed another and stoned another. We still want the killing part. Go back to Matthew 10, verse 17 again. Matthew chapter 10, verse 17. Read. 
but beware of men mm. for they will deliver you up to the councils and they will scourge you in their synagogues they will scourge you in their synagogues okay remember the husband men's job their job was supposed to feed the flock they did not instead they beat them they kill them and stone them you see that so that, that means they slept they slumbered and slept okay now Read, read, uh, read, read verse 21 now. Matthew 10, 21. Matthew chapter 10, verse 21. Read. And the brother shall deliver up the brother to death. You see that thing? That's what we read in Matthew 24. You understand? This is 14 chapters later in Matthew 24. This is Matthew 10. 14 chapters later, he's explaining the same thing. Read that again, verse 21. Matthew chapter 10, verse 21. Read. And the brother shall deliver up the brother to death. The brother will deliver up the brother to death because of what? He's offended. He's, because he's offended, he's going to betray you. Okay, go ahead. And the father, the child. The father, the child. The fathers will deliver their children. You understand? Their children because of this truth. Read. And the children shall rise up against their parents. The children will rise up against their parents. The children will say, yeah, you know, my mother is, is an Israelite. My father is a Jew. They believe such and such. They say salvation is only for them. The children will turn against. Guess what? Even the children, meaning new spirits coming into this truth. They are the children. They'll do the same too, to the leadership. You cannot make this up. Because, but it is written, okay? We must stay in the spirit. Go ahead. And cause them to be put to death. And do what? And cause them to be put to death. It's going to cause them to be put to death for the name of Christ's sake. Go ahead. And ye shall be hated of all men for my name's sake. Mm. But he that endureth to the end shall be saved. We must endure until the end so we can get delivered. Read. But when they persecute you in the city, mm. flee into another. For verily I say unto you, Ye shall not have gone over the cities of Israel till the Son of Man be come. Now that's some heavy stuff. He says, I say unto you, ye shall not have gone over the cities of Israel till the Son of Man be come. Meaning, we're not going to be able to reach all Israel until the Lord returns. That's why some are going to be what? The nations where they are scattered in, the nations will bring them back to Jerusalem. That's what he's saying right there. Now watch this. Give me Matthew 23, verse 30, verse 30. Matthew 23, verse 30. We're still dealing in the same chapter. Christ is explaining some heavy stuff here. Matthew 23, verse 30. Remember, he is checking the scribes and Pharisees, okay? Hmm. Read verse 30 now. Watch this. Matthew chapter 23, verse 30. And say, if we had been in the days of our fathers, we would not have been partakers with them in the blood of the prophets. So who was bringing, who was bringing death who was stoning, beating, you understand, and wounding and killing the prophets? Read verse 29. Verse 29. Mm -hmm. Go unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites. Mm. Go ahead. Because he built the tombs of the prophets and garnished the sepulchres of the righteous. You see what they're saying? It says they're building the tombs of the prophets and they garnished the sepulchres of the righteous. So it's almost as though the scribes and Pharisees were just digging, uh, with digging a grave for the, for the prophets before they put them to death. So now, what I want to show you is the scribes and Pharisees, they're the ones that are partakers of the blood of the prophets because they were responsible for killing the prophets. You understand? Because they were the husbandmen. Remember, the scribes and Pharisees, what were they? Read verse 1 and 2. Well, let's understand what were they. Matthew chapter 23, verse 1. Mm -hmm. Then spake Jesus to the multitude and to his disciples, saying, The scribes and the Pharisees sit in Moses' seat. So they sat in the judgment seat because Moses was in, sitting in the judgment seat. So the scribes and Pharisees, they sat in the same seat that Moses did. You understand? But guess what? Go ahead, verse 3. All therefore, Whatsoever they bid you observe. Read. That observe and do. Come on. 
but do not ye after their works. Really? For they say and do not. You see that for they say, but they don't do what they say. So now Christ was telling them they were hypocrites because they were not applying the commandments. They were teaching it, but they were not applying it. So what we're reading here is, is there were a bunch of hypocrites. So, but the key is they sat in the judgment seat. Verse 30 now is Christ is letting them know they are partakers of the blood of the prophets. You understand? So though, they are the husbandmen we're reading about in Mark 12. Get it? Mark, uh, Matthew 23, verse 30 now. Read. Matthew chapter 23, verse 30. Read. And say, if we had been in the days of our fathers, we would not have been partakers with them in the blood of the prophets. Mm -hmm. Read. Wherefore, ye be witnesses unto yourselves that ye are the children of them which killed the prophets. You see what he's telling them? You are, of, you are the children of them which killed the prophets. Meaning you are the children of your forefathers in the past. Meaning you are the wicked negras in the past that was killing the prophets. That's what he's telling them. You understand? They are the same spirits that was killing the prophets back then. They are back again doing the same thing. Killing the prophets. Beating, stoning, wounding, and killing the prophets. When they were supposed to what? To teach the people and lead by example. Right? Fill ye up then the measure of your fathers. He says, fill ye up the measure. Meaning measure what your fathers have done in the past versus what you're doing now. You're doing worse than your fathers because you are your fathers. Right? Ye serpents. Mm. Ye generation of vipers. Yo, he's insulting them. Because back then, when you insulted somebody by an animal, listen, that was a huge insult. Okay? So that was, that's why these words are being used now. Ye serpents, ye generation of vipers. Go ahead. How can ye escape the damnation of hell? Meaning what? Nuclear fire that's coming. Go ahead. Wherefore, behold, I send unto you prophets and wise men and scribes. Mm. And some of them ye shall kill and crucify. You see that? And some of them you're going to kill and crucify. Come on. And some of them shall ye scourge in your synagogues mm. and persecute them from city to city. Because guess what? During the time of Christ, they were going against Christ and the disciples that followed him. When Christ left, what was they doing to the apostles? They were killing them, following them from city to city. When you read the book of Acts, you see how they were, they were, they were killing the prophets, beheading them, crucifying them. You understand? Speaking evil of them, delivering them to the power of that rule during that time, which was Rome. So Christ is prophesying what these husbandmen, they are going to do, which is the scribes and Pharisees and the Sadducees, the chief priests. Okay, go ahead. That upon you may come all the righteous blood shed upon the earth. Mm. From the blood of righteous Abel unto the blood of Zacharias, son of Barakias, whom you slew between the temple and the altar. So he's saying, listen, the, 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 the evils that you've done with the killing of the prophets from the time of Abel unto what? Unto what? He says, unto the blood of Zechariah, son of Barakiah, whom he slew between the temple and the altar. I'm going to show you some heavy stuff here. Mm. Watch this. Give me Second Chronicles 24. Second Chronicles chapter 24. Watch this. Second Chronicles 24 verse 20. You know what? Hmm. Read verse 15. I'm going to show you something. Second Chronicles chapter 24 verse 15. Read. But Joida waxed old mm. and was full of days when he died. And 130 years old was he when he died. So Joida was the priest. Joida was an advisor to who? Was an advisor to Joash. Joash, this young man. Read on. Watch this. And they buried him in the city of David among the kings because he had done good in Israel, both toward God and toward his house. So he was about the nation. He was about his family. He was, he was a family man. He was about the nation. He was about the business of the Most High God. Read. Now, after the death of Jehoiada, came the princes of Judah and made obeisance to the king. Stop right there. After the death of Jehoiada, is as came the princes of Judah. 
These are the leaders, right? These are the leaders. They sit in Moses' seat. Pay attention. Go ahead. Then the king hearkened unto them. The king listened unto them. Joash listened unto them because he was still simple as hell because Jehoiada now is gone. He doesn't have a counselor now. Okay, go ahead. And they left the house of the Lord God of their fathers. So now said, these wicked negras, these princes, they just they said they made obeisance to the king. What were they doing? They were buttering him because they were, they've been they've been waiting for something to pop off. They were waiting for Jehoiada to die. That's what they was waiting for. Because you've got, you've got, you're gonna have Negroes like that among us, with fringes and a bottle of blue, hoping that you know what? I wish the leadership wasn't here because I want to do this. I want to look like this. I want to say this to this brother, but I cannot because the leadership will check my behind. You see that? That's the same spirit here. So when Christ showed up on the scene, guess what? Christ was the big brother. They said, "Oh, oh, no, no! Don't be te- dealing with your brother like this. Why are you te- te- dealing with your brother this way?" You better fix that. You understand? So now Christ, what was he? he was policing the scribes and Pharisees now. That's why they were following him around to put him to death, waiting for him to say something that they can use against him. Likewise, these wicked negras, they were waiting for Jehoiada to die so they can do whatever they wanted to do, which is what? Go the hell off. You understand? Strange doctrines. Go ahead. And they left the house of the Lord God of their fathers and served groves and idols. Idolatry. You see that? It's not about the nation, but about some the precept. Go ahead. And wrath came upon Judah and Jerusalem. For this they are trespass. For this they are trespass. Now, go ahead. Yet he sent prophets to them mm-hmm. to bring them again unto the Lord. And they testified against them, but they would not give ear. You see that? And they testified against them because when the prophets come, the prophets are not coming to cuddle you. The prophets are not coming you to give red roses. No. The prophets are not going to come and rub your back. The Bible is telling you the, what the job of the prophet is. Read verse 19 again so we get it. Second Chronicles chapter 24 verse 19. Mm-hmm. Yet he sent prophets to them to bring them again unto the Lord. And they testified against them but they would not give ear. I want you to I want you to see something heavy here. The servants that were mm, the servants that were sent to the husbandmen. I mean, they, remember these are servants, right? They come into the vineyard to learn, but for some ungodly reason, the husbandmen they got offended. Why? Because give me that in Jeremiah forty-four and four. We coming back here. Jeremiah chapter 44 verse 4. Read. How be it, I sent unto you all my servants, the prophets. Stop right there. What did, what, whoa, whoa, whoa. What did the Lord say? <laughs> How be it, I sent unto you all my servants, the prophets. It says, I sent unto you all my servants, the prophets. Go ahead. Rising early uh-huh. and sending them. Say, come on, oh, not this abominable thing that I hate. So the servants, which is the prophets, they were they were sent by the Lord to go and rebuke, to testify against the husbandmen. Now go back to Second Chronicles 24, verse 19. Second Chronicles chapter 24, verse 19. Mm-hmm. Yet he sent prophets to them to bring them again unto the Lord. And they testified against them, but they would not give ear. You see what the prophets do? The servants, the prophets, what do they do? Their job is to testify against the husbandmen, those that are doing evil, but they would not give ear. So there is, why didn't they give ear? Instead of giving ear, what did they do to the prophets? The servants, the prophets. Go back to Matthew 21. Okay, Matthew 21 verse 35. Matthew chapter 21, verse 35. Go ahead. And the husbandman took his servants mm-hmm. and beat one you and see that? killed another. So the husbandman, they took the servants. Who are the servants? The prophets. That's why the husbandman was offended. That's why they were acting the way that was acting. Because why? 
the prophets came to testify against their evil deeds. That's what we're reading. So the servant is making reference to the prophets. You understand? Because that's why they were, instead of giving ear, taking heed, what did they do? They beat one, they killed another, and they stoned another, and they did likewise with the more servants that he sent. You see that thing? That's what we're reading here. So the servants goes into the prophets. Hence why the husbandmen, instead of what, instead of hearkening to the voice of the prophets, they did not. Instead, what did they do? They killed, they beat, they stoned them because they got offended at the word of God. Instead of being blessed, they got offended. So, go back to 2 Chronicles 24. Read verse 20 now. 2 Chronicles chapter 24, verse 20. And the Spirit of God came upon Zechariah, the son of Jehoiada, the priest, mm. which stood above the people and said unto them, Thus saith God, Why transgress ye the commandments of the Lord, that ye cannot prosper? Mm -hmm. Because ye have forsaken the Lord, he hath also forsaken you. Okay, you see what he's telling the husbandmen, the princes, right? And they conspired against him. You see what they did? They conspired against him. They conspired against Zechariah, the son of Jehoiada, the priest. This Zechariah, the son of Jehoiada, the priest, is Zechariah, the son of Barakias. Understand that. Go ahead. And stoned him with stones at the commandment of the king in the court of mm. the house of the Lord. You see that? Because this boy, this king now, he killed the son of the man that took care of him. That's Negroes for you. You understand? Now, watch this. Let's go back. No, no, keep going. Read verse 22. Because Zechariah, the son of Jehoiada, he came in the name of the Lord. You understand? To rebuke them. But they did not give ear. Instead of giving ear, they conspired against him. Read. Thus Joash, the king, remembered not the kindness which Jehoiada, his father, had done to him. Mm. But slew his son. And when he died, he said, the Lord look upon it and require it. Yeah, this boy was a demon. Now, go back to Matthew now. No, no, go back to Matthew 23. Matthew 23, verse 35 again. I'm going to show you something here. Watch this. Matthew chapter 23, verse 35. Come on. That upon you may come all the righteous blood shed upon the earth. It says, upon you may come all... He says, but he says that upon you, upon you who? You scribes and Pharisees, you husbandmen, the princes that we read, we read about, where? In the book of Second Chronicles. The same spirits. You understand? The same spirits is the same spirits we're reading about here. That upon you may come all the righteous blood shed upon the earth. From the blood of righteous Abel, Unto the blood of Zacharias, the son of Barakias, whom he slew between the temple and the altar. The one we just read in Second Chronicles. You understand? So now, he's bringing the judgment. He says, you scribes and Pharisees, you wicked Israelites. Guess what? All the blood that was ever shed of the prophets, the seven, the prophets that are sent unto you, that you stoned, that you beat, you wounded, you killed. Guess what? You're going to suffer the judgment of all the prophets that died from the beginning. Their judgment will, their blood will come upon you. Their blood is on your hands. That's what he's saying. You understand? Now, keep going. From the blood of righteous Abel unto the blood of Zacharias, son of Barakias, mm -hmm. whom he slew between the temple and the altar. Go ahead. Verily I say unto you, all these things shall come upon this generation. All these things shall come upon this generation. Which generation? That generation, which is this generation of today, which is the generation we read about in Second Chronicles. The generation we read about where? In number 16. Korah, Dathan, and Abiram. The scribes and Pharisees and, and the chief priests. Hmm. Go ahead. Oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, thou that killest the prophets 
You see that Jerusalem, Jerusalem, thou that killest the prophets, come on. And stonest them which are sent unto thee. The servants, the prophets, you stone them which are sent unto you. He says, you kill them, you stone them. Go ahead. How often would I have gathered thy children together, mm -hmm. even as a hen gathered her chickens under her wings, and you would not. Because they did not want to be gathered together by Christ. They didn't want that. They wanted integration when the Lord says, separate yourself from your enemies and come together as a nation, and then I will deliver you. They don't want that. They don't want the Lord to gather them. That's why they kill the prophets that are sent unto them. The servants, the prophets. You understand? Now, watch this. Um, give me, go back to Mark. I think I want to go back there. Go back to Mark 12. Mark chapter 12. Because we covered two. We covered the ones that were stoned. Remember, they are, the Christ is prophesying. He says, I sent prof prophets unto you. And guess what? You are going to kill. You are going to stone. You are going to kick out of your synagogues. You're going to do all men of evil unto them. Watch this. Give me that in 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 22. 2 Corinthians 11. Because it happened during the time of Christ. It also happened during the time of the Acts of the Apostles. It's going to happen tonight, today as well. Why? Because we are in the time of the Acts of the Apostles right now. Second Corinthians, Second Corinthians chapter 11, verse 22. Because, Second. Hmm, because, you know, man, the Apostle Paul. Now, Second Corinthians, you know, I was going over this chapter. Watch this. Hmm, should I go over this now? You know what? Read verse 16. Because what's going on here is the Apostle Paul is explaining stuff. Because remember, this is the church of Corinth. Wicked Negras were up in there. Now he's explaining, you know, somehow this topic just keep coming over and over. I can tell you now, something is going to pop off. Second Chronicles chapter, not Chronicles, Corinthians 11, read verse 16. Watch this. You know what? Start of verse 12. Second Corinthians chapter 11, verse 12. Mm -hmm. But what I do, that I will do. But what I do, which is teach the gospel, groom and raise brothers up, that's the job of the prophets, by the way. Is this, but what I do, that I will do. The mission is a goal. No tantrum is going to stop this mission. Understand that. Read on. That I may cut off occasion from them which desire occasion. He says that I may cut off occasion from them which desire. They desire the occasion to what? To be on the level. That's what the Apostle Paul, because the Apostle Paul was sick, was, 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 we were, what did they say? He says he was sick and tired of being sick and tired. Read that again, verse 12. Second Corinthians chapter 11, verse 12. But what I do, that I will do. Uh -huh. That I may cut off occasion from them which desire occasion. Read. That wherein they glory, they may be found even as we. Is as if you are glory, you think you're on a level, you have to really, you have to count the stripes and say, are you on the level? Did you go through what these men have gone through? No, you have not. You, ha you have not. Have you gone through what we've gone through? No, you haven't. You understand? So that's why it says that we're in the glory that we they that they because if you glory and think you're on some level, you have to be found even as we. You, you cannot be found even as we. The apostle Paul was sick and tired of being sick and tired. So now he's just letting them have it. Okay. Jump down to verse 16. Watch this. Verse 16. Mm -hmm. I say again, let no man think me a fool. Don't think I'm a fool. I'm not a fool. I see what's going on. I know what's going on. All praise to the Most High. I'm not in your house. The Lord is in your house. Okay. Read that part again. Verse 16. Second Corinthians chapter 11, verse 16. I say again, let no man think me a fool. Don't think I'm a stupid. I'm not a stupid. Giannis. You might be thinking I don't see nothing. You might be thinking or, mm, I can second guess the leadership. You don't think I don't see you. I see you. 
you, the thing is that the, you're, you, are, you, are, you are not a problem. The mission is, is bigger than you. But when the time is right, you are, you are, I'm going to dedicate time for you. I will make your life so difficult that you will leave. Why? Because the mission is a goal, that the truth of the gospel may continue. I want to tell you straight up, we're not going to play games in this truth, I'm telling you right now. Because as Neg Negroes are, you see, black people are conditioned to destroy from within. It's not if or maybe, they are built for that stuff. You understand? Black people love Amanyofo Nyofo, but Israelites don't love none of that. They don't want to play in that space. Why? Because it's of the devil. You understand? It is of the devil. Read. If otherwise, yet as a fool, receive me. But he says, you know, listen, what? receive me as a fool. Like, you, you think me I'm a fool? No problem. Receive me as a fool just for a second. Watch this. Read. That I may boast myself a little. Because what was the boasting that he took about? He says, if you glory, you may be, you must be found even as we. Read. That which I speak, I speak it not after the Lord, uh -huh. but as it were foolishly. As it were foolishly, because you think I'm a fool. Read. But as it were foolishly, in this confidence of boasting. In this confidence of boasting, it says, because you think I'm a fool. Watch this. Read on, verse 18. Come on. Seeing that many glory after the flesh. You glory after the flesh. You are not here to build. You glory after the flesh. Go, go ahead. I will glory also. You see what he's saying? He says, I'm going to glory also. But when I do, you're not going to be on the level. That's what he's saying. Read on. Verse 19. Come on. For ye suffer fools gladly. He says, you allow fools gladly. Why? Because Rehoboam syndrome activated now. You understand? That's what he said, for ye suffer fools gladly. Rehoboam syndrome is online. That program, that demonic program now is online. Things which are written for time, they are written for our learning, but brothers don't learn nothing from the things which are written for time. They are not learning from them. Read. Seeing ye yourselves are wise. He's being sarcastic. Go ahead. For ye suffer if a man bring you into bondage. You see, he says, for because you allow it, because a man is bringing you back into bondage to being that wicked, grimy Negro that you was in the world before you came into this truth. Read. If a man devour you. Because a man that will devour you is the one that is in friendship with you. He's the one that's going to devour you. Why? Because you're not here to build. You are here for friendship. I told you about that thing. That thing is dangerous, man. Okay. Read. If a man take of you, if a man exalts himself. You see that thing? So that Rehoboam syndrome, once gets activated, he says what? A man will take of you, a man will exalt himself, but he's a child, but he's already exalting himself above you. Why? Because when you don't know, you, I don't know how you tie your shoes because the spine is gone. You see the point? That's what the apostle, he's, he's getting on the Corinthians. Okay, go ahead. If a man smite you on the face. Because that's exactly what it means. So now the Rehoboam syndrome has been activated. Man, this thing gets, you know, this thing gets on my nerves here. Okay. Sirach chapter, um, hmm, Sirach 47. Watch this. Sirach 47, verse 23. Watch this. It is yes, chapter 47, verse 23. Read. Thus rested Solomon with his fathers. Okay, Solomon died. Read. And of his seed, he left behind him Rehoboam. Mm -hmm. Rehoboam, his son now. Watch this. Even the foolishness of the people. You see, the, I'm showing you the characteristics of Rehoboam. Rehoboam was what he says. He was the foolishness of the people. Come on. And one that had no understanding. And one that has, had, he had no understanding. Because he was not keeping the... He thought this is a place to hang out and to bicker and to mama and to complain and to gossip. Read. Who turned away the people through his counsel. He, might, he destroyed the people through his counsel. Wicked nigra him. Read on. There was also Jeroboam, the son mm. of Nebat. Go ahead. Who caused Israel to sin and showed Ephraim the way of sin. Meaning what? He put Israel into idolatry. 
from Dan even unto Beersheba, two golden calves. Read. And their sins were multiplied exceedingly, mm. that they were driven out of the land. You see that thing? That's what happens when Rehoboam syndrome gets activated. But things which are written aforetime, guess what? They are written for our learning. Brothers don't learn nothing. One ear of the other. Even now, it's going one ear of the other. I'm going to tell you now. Go back to 2 Corinthians 11. 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 21. I speak as concerning reproach. Concerning reproach. Disrespect. That's what he's talking about. Because, man, you know this thing really gets under my skin. Because you see the Apostle Paul when he showed up on the scene. What did he do? He was explaining to us, listen, first of all, I like to, um, hmm, let me read it. So they th I, I'm not making this up. Romans 16, read verse one. I'm going to show you the apostle, Paul, he wrote three quarters of the New Testament. Look at the spirit that he had. You understand? Romans 16 and one. Watch this. Romans chapter 16, verse one. Read. I command unto you, Phoebe, our sister. Mm. Which is a servant of the church, which is a centuria. Centuria, okay. It says, I commend unto you, Phoebe, our sister, because Sister Phoebe had what? He, she had a, a good reputation, she had a good name in the sight of the Apostle Paul. The Apostle Paul was able to see that thing. He said, That's a good sister right there. Go ahead. Now remember, Phoebe, our sister, was in the truth before the Apostle Paul. Watch this. Read. That ye receive her in the Lord. As become a saint, mm. and that he assist her in whatsoever business she had need of you. Read. For she has been a succorer of many and of myself also. So she was moving after the footsteps of her foremother, Anna from the tribe of Asher. She was the she was aged, and she led the people to Christ. Watch this. Go ahead. Verse 3 now. Watch this. Greet Priscilla and Aquila, mm. my helpers in Christ Jesus. You see that this is a couple now, Priscilla and Aquila. Guess what? Jezebel and Ahab in Church Square, they think they are Priscilla and Aquila. You cannot make this up. Go ahead, verse four. Who have for my life laid down their own necks? You see what they did? He says, who for my life laid their own necks? Because when the apostle Paul wrote letters, they delivered those letters in Rome. You understand? They did that. So, because Rome could read the letter and they found something they didn't like, Priscilla and Aquila could be put to death. Read on. And to whom not only I give thanks, mm. but also all the churches of the Gentiles. Meaning scattered Israelites. Read on. Because they were doing in work. They were putting in work. Priscilla and Aquila. Go ahead. Likewise, greet the church that is in their house. Because they had a church in their house. Read. Salute my well beloved Epaneus, mm -hmm. who is the first fruits of Achaia unto Christ. He is the first fruits. Okay, go ahead. Watch this. Greet Mary, who bestowed much labor on us. You see what? Look, look what the Apostle Paul is doing. He is naming the people that came in the truth before him. The Apostle, we talk about the Apostle Paul here. So if a Negro just walks into the camp, no works whatsoever. Two years, no works. Two years, no. Look what's going on here. The Apostle Paul, 14 years plus in the truth, this is what he's doing. So a Negro just walks in with a diaper and a diaper rash. Guess what? You think you're on some level? you simple as hell. Look, the Apostle Paul, the aged in the truth. This is the spirit. This is the example he left behind. No, no. Negroes will not look at this. I say Negroes because Negroes, they don't about, they are not about the father's business, although they've got fringes and a bottle of blue. Read on. Salute Antronicus and Juniah, my kinsmen, and mm. my fellow prisoners. Read. Who are of note among the apostles who also were in Christ before me. Read that again, read that again. Who were what? Who also were in Christ before me. Now, when you keep reading, he keeps mentioning all the people that were in the truth before him. You see, the, you see the, the, the spirit of our forefathers? 
This is the spirit our forefathers moved in. So this demonic spirit that I'm seeing, some of you Negroes, you brothers, you better get it together. You understand? You better get it together. The things which are written are for time. And guess what? The chapter before it is explaining that. The apostle Paul goes into that in Romans 15 and 4. Go back to 2 Corinthians chapter 11 now. Because guess what? The Lord says, blessed is he whosoever shall not be offended. Hmm. 2 Corinthians chapter 11. Why am I in Chronicles? Maybe there's something I need to go back to in Chronicles. Eh? Okay, watch this. Now, jump down. Remember, I was just explaining what happened during the time of the book of Acts. What Christ was, was prophesying in Matthew 23, what they will do to the prophets that he will send unto them. Now, I'm showing you, even after when Christ was gone, they were still doing the same thing, killing the prophets. Okay? Read verse 22 now. Watch this. No, no, verse 21. Verse 21. Second Corinthians chapter 11, verse 21. Come on. I speak as concerning reproach. Meaning disrespect. That's why we went to, um, you know, Romans 16. Because of this, the Apostle Paul, says, I'm speaking, re when it, I'm speaking concerning reproach, disrespect. Read. As though we had been weak. As though we had been weak. Meaning what? You sit with the brothers, you talk to them, you laugh with them. Negroes mistaken that for weakness because you're laughing with them. That's what the Apostle Paul is explaining here. Read on. How be it, wherein soever any is bold. Well, however, wherein soever any is bold, watch this, read. I speak foolishly. I speak foolish I, because you think me a fool. Watch this, watch what he says there. I am bold also. I'm going to be bold. Don't get it twisted. That's what the Apostle Paul is saying. Read on, verse 22. Come on. Are they Hebrews? So am I. Mm. Are they Israelites? So am I. But guess what? Are they Hebrews? So is he. He says, so am I. Are they Israelites? So am I. But guess what? No, no, they are not Israelites. They are black people. No, no, they are not Israelites. They are black people. Until they repent, they are still black people. Understand that. Read. Are they the seed of Abraham? So am I. No, they are not the seed of Abraham. Not yet. Until they repent, get themselves right. They are still black people. Go ahead. Are they ministers of Christ? I speak as a fool. So you see that he says, I must be the foolish one then. Are they ministers of Christ? So then what am I doing? <laughs> you see what he's saying? He says, are they ministers of Christ? I speak as a fool. He's been sarcastic. He says, if they are the ministers of Christ and they are moving this way, then what am I? Go ahead. I am more. Mm. In labors, more abundant. You see, you see what he's doing? He's explaining what we just read in verse 12 when he says, that way in their glory, that they may be found even as we. Read that thing again. Second Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23. Mm -hmm. Are they ministers of Christ? I speak as a fool. Great. I am more. Mm. In labors, more abundant. In labors, more abundant. Go ahead. In stripes above measure. In stripes above measure. You've never been stoned. you never hit with bottles. You'll be bleeding. You've never seen that. You understand, boy. Go ahead. In prisons, more frequent. Mm. In deaths, oft. You see that? This, this has happened so many times that the prison didn't happen, but the police happened as I cannot even count. In death, oft. Yes. Keep going. Of the Jews, five times received I 40 stripes, save one. You see what he's saying? He says, listen, I received 40 stripes from the Jews. Why is he saying? Because guess what? They wanted to kill the Apostle Paul. You understand? Trials above measure. That's, the Apostle Paul is giving his resume because he was sick and tired of being sick and tired of the Church of Corinth. They were disrespecting the Apostle Paul. You understand? Go ahead. Thrice was I beaten with rods. Mm -hmm. Once was I stoned. Yeah, we, I've been through that. Go ahead. Thrice I suffered shipwreck. Mm. 
a night and a day I have been in the deep. So now we don't sail now, but guess what? Night vision warfare, you see, you have never seen some stuff yet. You haven't seen anything yet because they are not on YouTube. They are not recorded. You don't know about that. Keep going. In journeys often, mm. in perils of waters. In journeys of traveling and all that, go ahead. In perils of robbers. Mm. In perils by my own countrymen. Is this, is this in perils by my own countrymen, my own kingsmen, okay? My, my own people, read. In perils by the heathen. The other nations, come on. In perils in the city. In the city where the Negroes want to put us to death, set us on fire, go ahead. In perils in the wilderness. Mm. In perils in the sea. Because he was traveling by boat and ship and all that, come on. In perils among false brethren. That's some heavy stuff right there. That's what Christ said. The Apostle Paul is repeating the same thing. He says, in perils among false brethren. Wicked Negroes just hiding. That's what the Lord is explaining here. Why is the Apostle Paul going over this? He's going over this because there were things that was taking place during the time of the Acts of the Apostles. These things needed to be written down. Why? For our learning. So we don't sleep. We don't be naive. You understand? That's the Lord, that's what the most High God is letting us know. He speed. The Apostle Paul, remember, he was writing to the leaders of the churches, the teachers, the leaders of the congregation. He was writing this to them. He says, you leaders over there, you better be mindful. You better be awake. You better be on alert. Don't sleep around Negroes. That's what he was telling them. Likewise, listen, they will, they will not be sleepists in here. I can tell you that much. Don't think me a fool. That's what the Apostle Paul is saying. I'm saying the same thing in the spirit of Christ. Understand that. Now, why was I going over this? Go back to Matthew. Matthew 21. Matthew 21 verse 35. Remember, this is the parables of wisdom. We're breaking it down. Matthew 21 verse 35. Read it. Matthew chapter 21 verse 35. Go ahead. And the husbandman took his servants and beat one and killed another and stoned another. And stoned another. So he's going into what? He's going into the servants, the prophets that were sent. Because the prophets, the, the prophets, the servants, the prophets that were sent, they were supposed, they what? The reason why there was, they got beaten instead of being hurt, they were killed and stoned is because what they taught was offensive to them, was offensive to the husbandmen because they sat in Moses' seat, but they did not obey and apply that which was written. You see them? Now go back to Mark 12, verse 6 now. Let's keep going. I need to finish this parable. Mark chapter 12, verse 6. Go ahead. Having yet therefore one son, his mm. well-beloved. His well-beloved, go ahead. He sent him also last unto them, saying, mm. they will reverence my son. Now that's heavy right there. Read verse 6 again. Mark chapter 12, verse 6. Read. Having yet therefore one son, his well-beloved. This, well this is the Mosai. The Mosai having yet one son, Go ahead. He is well beloved. Read. He sent him also last unto them, mm. saying, They will reverence my son. They will reverence my son. Now, let's deal with this. Okay. He says, Having yet one son, he is well beloved. Now, let's get the book of Colossians. Give me Colossians 1, verse 17. Colossians. Chapter 1, verse 17. You know what? Start of verse 14. Colossians, chapter 1, verse 14. Mm. In whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. The hymn is Christ. The, the blood of Christ is how we're going to get, we, is how we go, we're getting forgiveness of our sins through repentance. Go ahead. Who is the image of the invisible God? So Christ was the, is the image of the invisible God, okay? Is the visible image of the invisible God, right? The firstborn of every creature. The firstborn of every creature, okay? Is only begotten. Go ahead. 
for by him were all things created. He created all things at the command of the heavenly father. Read. That are in heaven. The things that are in heaven, he created that at the command of the most high. Read. And that are in earth. Those, the things that are in earth. Read. Visible and invisible. Mm -hmm. Whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created by him and for him. You see that all things were created by him and for him. Read verse 17 now. Watch this. And he is before all things. Mm. And by him all things consist. You see that? It says he is before all things. And by him all things consist. Heavy stuff. Go ahead. And he is the head of the body. The, the 12 tribes of Israel. The church. Come on. Who is the beginning, mm -hmm. the firstborn from the dead, the firstborn from the dead, come on, that in all things he might have the preeminence. You see that he might have the preeminence because he's an heir. So guess what? What we just read, go back to Mark 12 now, verse 6 now again. Mark chapter 12, verse 6. Mm -hmm. Having yet therefore one son, his one well son, beloved. He read he said, having therefore yet, having yet therefore one son, that's Christ, our Lord and Savior, he is before all things, and by him all things were, were created, for him and by him. Read on. He's what? He's well beloved. He's well beloved. Okay, Christ is the well beloved of the Father. Okay, now watch this. Give me that in Matthew 17, verse 5. Matthew 17, the fifth chapter. Read what you got. Matthew chapter 17, verse 5. Read. Right. While he had spake, behold, a bright cloud overshadowed them. That them is Peter, James, and John, because they saw Moses and Elijah. Moses and Elijah, they showed up on the scene. Hmm. Okay. Read. Right. And behold, a voice out of the cloud, which said, this is my beloved son. You see that? This is my beloved son. He's well beloved that we read in Mark chapter 12, verse 6. Come on. In whom I am well pleased. Mm -hmm. Hear ye him. You see that? Hear ye him. This is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Hear ye him. The Lord, the most High God was pleased with what Christ did. Now, let's go back. Mark chapter 12. Mark 12 and verse 6 again. Mark chapter 12, verse 6. Read. Having yet therefore one son, his well beloved, mm -hmm. he sent him also last unto them, saying, Stop, stop, whoa, 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 whoa. He did what? He sent him also last unto them. That part right there. He, he did what? He sent him also last unto them. He sent, he sent him also last unto them. Hold this. Give me Hebrews 1. He sent him also last unto them. Hebrews 1 and 1. We're going to read down. Hebrews chapter 1 verse 1. Come on. God, who at sundry times and in diverse manners, spake in time past unto the fathers by the prophets. You see that? He says in sundry times, meaning in, diverse, in different times in history and in diverse manner in different ways. He spake in time past unto the fathers by the prophets, right? Watch this. Come on. Hath in these last days spoken Hath unto in us what? by his... Hath in these last days. Hath in these last days. In these last days. When Christ was born, that was the beginning of the last days. So when he says he sent him also last unto them, guess what? In the last days. When Christ was born, that was the beginning of the last days. You understand? Read that again, verse 2. Hebrews chapter 1, verse 2. Mm -hmm. Has in these last days spoken unto us by his son. He spoke unto us by his son. So remember, I want you to see something. The apostle Paul was, listen, he learned from the Messiah. Read verse 1 again. I'm going to show you something. I'm going to show you something here. Pay attention. Hebrews chapter 1 verse 1. Go ahead. God, 
who at sundry times and in diverse manners spake in Come time on. past unto the fathers by the prophets. Unto the what? Unto the fathers by the prophets. We just read this in Mark 12, verse 1 through 5. We just read this in Matthew 21, verse 33 to 34. We just read this. The Apostle Paul is summarizing here in one verse. It says, in time past, he said what unto the fathers. He spoke in time past unto the fathers by the prophets. The servants, the prophets, whom they beat, stoned, wounded, and killed. When the prophets were sent, after the prophets were sent, who came next? Read verse 2. Had in these last days spoken mm -hmm. unto us by his son. You see that thing? Had in these last days spoken unto us by his son. That's when the most high God sent his well beloved. You understand? He sent him also last unto them. So he sent the prophets, and then the prophets paved the way for the Messiah, the heir to the throne. Guess what? That's the same thing we're reading in Mark 12, verse 6. The Apostle Paul is explaining it here. He's explaining the same thing in Hebrews 1, verse 1 and 2. Go ahead. Whom he had appointed heir of all things. You see that thing? He appointed Christ to be heir of all things. Come on. By whom also he made the worlds. By whom also he made the world. So Christ is the heir of all things. He's heir to everything that the Most High God has. He is an heir to that. Read on, verse 3. Who being the brightness of his glory. He is the brightness of the most high God's glory. Come on. And the express image of his person. The express image of his person. He looked exactly like his father. Come on. And upholding all things by the word of his power. When he had by himself perished our sins set down on the right hand of the majesty on high. You see that? He sat down on the right hand of the most high God. So now, go back to Mark 12, verse 6. Mark, chapter 12, verse 6. Remember, he said, I'm the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the what? The last. Read verse 6. Mark, chapter 12, verse 6. Having yet therefore one son, his well-beloved, Mm -hmm. He sent him also last unto them, saying, they will reverence my son. The day that will reverence his son is the husbandman. They will reverence my son. Right? Go ahead. But those husbandmen said among themselves, this is the heir. This is the what? This is the heir. So they knew who he was. They knew where this is the heir. They knew it. For this is the heir to the Most High God's throne, sitting on the right hand. He is the heir. Read that again. Mark chapter 12, verse 7. But those husbandmen said among themselves, This is the heir. Come, let us kill him. And the inheritance shall be ours. You see that thing? Let us kill him and the inheritance will be ours. So they knew he was the heir. So they conspired against him amongst themselves, saying, this is the heir, come, let us kill him, and the inheritance shall be ours. Jealousy. So they wanted to sit on the throne. Isn't that the same thing that whenever the Lord sets up leaders, you always have wicked Negroes that walk in thinking they can do it better. Meaning they can do it better. Not the Lord can do it better through them. Mm -mm. They think they can do it better. That's the same thing we're reading here. You see that thing? Read verse 7 again. Mark chapter 12 verse 7. Come on. But those husbandmen said among themselves, This is the heir. Come, let us kill him, and the inheritance shall be ours. That's, this is what they said. They conspired to kill him because why? They wanted the inheritance. Watch this. Now, let's get, go, go back to Zechariah now. Go to Zechariah chapter 11. Let's go back there. Let's touch on this thing. Let's read the prophecy. Zechariah chapter 11. Um, read verse 7 now. We're going to read down. Zechariah chapter 11, verse 7. Mm -hmm. And I will feed the flock of slaughter, even you, 
or poor of the flock. The poor of the flock is Israel that believes and keeping the command. Get that in, uh, let's see who is the poor. Get that in Isaiah chapter 14, the last verse. Let's see who is the poor of the flock. Isaiah chapter 14, verse 32. Mm -hmm. What shall one then answer the messengers of the nation that the Lord had founded Zion mm. and the poor of his people shall trust in him? You see that the poor of the Lord's people is Zion. So let's go back. Zechariah chapter 11, verse 7. Zechariah chapter 11, verse 7. Go ahead. And I will feed the flock of slaughter, even mm. you, O poor of the flock. Come on. And I took unto me two staves. The two staves the one... is Judah. There's two staves goes into Judah and Israel. Come on. The one I called beauty. And the other Come on. I called bands. And I fed the flock. And I fed the flock. Who's the flock? The, the congregation, the church. Read. Three shepherds also I cut off in one month. Are in one month. Uh, three shepherds also, he says, he cut off three shepherds in one month. You understand? He cut off the three shepherds. Go ahead. And my soul loathes them. He says, and I hate them. He says, my soul hates them. Go ahead. And their soul also abhorred me. And their soul also abhorred him, abhorred me, meaning they hated him. You understand? Watch this. Give me that in uh, Mark 831. Let's see who the three shepherds are that abhor him, that he, he load, he, his soul load them, and their soul also abhor him. Mark 831. Let's get that. You know what? Before you get that, get Luke 19 first. Then we're going to go to Mark. Luke chapter 19. And verse 13. Luke chapter 19, verse 13. Let's get to the point. Read verse 14. Luke chapter 19, verse 14. Mm -hmm. But his citizens hated him. You see that? But his citizens hated him, meaning his own people despised his gods. Read. And sent a message after him, saying, we will not have this man to reign over us. You see that? We will not have this heir to rule over us. We will not have this man to reign over us. Verse 27 now. Listen, this is what he calls them. Come on. Verse 27. But those mine enemies. But those my what? But those mine enemies. So those citizens, his own people, he's saying, these are my enemies right here. These are not my friends. These are my enemies. Come on which would not that I should reign over them. Mm -hmm. Bring hither and slay them before me. I'll bring hither and slay them before me, meaning put them to death. Mark 831, let's see who those enemies are. Mark chapter 8, verse 81. Come on. And he began to teach them that the son of man must suffer many things. The son of man and, must suffer, must suffer many things. Come on, meaning be crucified, tortured, spit on, smacked up across the face, whipped on his back until his bones was showing. Come on. And be rejected of the elders. Mm -hmm. And of the chief priests. Right. And scribes. Mm. And be killed. And after three days, rise again. Let's go back. Zechariah chapter 11 now. Read verse 8 again. Zechariah chapter 11, verse 8. Mm -hmm. Three shepherds also I cut off in one month. Read. And my soul loathed them, and their soul also abhorred me. And their soul also abhorred me. Watch this. Now, give me that in Isaiah 53. Isaiah chapter 53 and verse, verse 1. Isaiah chapter 53, verse 1. Who has believed our report? Mm -hmm. And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? And, who, and to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? Okay, come on. Who has believed our report? The prophet, the reward, the, the report of the prophets. Because we, the prophets, we bring the news to our people. What news? The good news. You understand? I get how people don't watch the news, they don't listen to the radio. 
they are occupied by TikTok. Our job is to bring the news to them. The good news. We are the news. Read that again, verse 1. Isaiah chapter 53, verse 1. Mm -hmm. Who has believed our report? Come on. And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? Read. For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant. The he that shall grow up before the most high God as a tender plant. Mm. Mm. Heavy stuff, man. Woo. Read that again, verse 2. Isaiah chapter 53, verse 2. Come on. For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant. As a tender plant. Come on. And as a root out of a dry ground. Uh -huh. He has no form, no comeliness. Meaning what? He was not a, he was not, um, he was not a charmer boy. Okay. Christ was not a charmer boy. Go ahead. And when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. Because they despise Christ. Okay, watch this. Go ahead. He is despised and rejected of men. You see that? That's what we just read. You understand? It says, my soul abhorred them and their soul also abhorred me. That's what we're reading. It says, he is despised and rejected of men. Come on. A man of sorrows. A man of sorrows because they made him sick. Go ahead. And acquainted with grief. Our acquainted with was grieved by what they was doing. Come on. And we hid as it were our faces from him. He was despised and we esteemed him not. Christ was despised and they did not esteem him. Go ahead. Surely he has borne our griefs mm. and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God and afflicted. Because they said the reason why he's going through this is because he was, he was evil. That's why they said what they said. The reason why he's going through this is because he's evil. But the Lord is, the, but Isaiah is going to tell you, no, 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 it's not because he was evil. He did nothing wrong. He was innocent. Watch this. Come on. But he was wounded for our transgressions. Now he's telling you why the reason, the reason he was crucified and tortured the way that he was. He was wounded for our transgressions. You understand? The same way they were killing and beating and wounding the killing the prophets, guess what? They wounded Christ first before they could do this to the prophets. And guess what? When Christ was going to be sent last, they did this to the prophets first. And guess what? They, they, they did it before Christ came. They did it after Christ left. They're also going to do it before Christ make his second coming. Read. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with stripes we are healed. And with his stripes we are healed. Jump down to verse 8 now. Watch this. Verse 8. He was taken from prison and from judgment. Mm. You see that? He was taken from prison and from judgment. This goes into Matthew now 26. Come on. Matthew 27. <clears throat> Excuse and me. who shall declare his generation? For he was cut off out of the land of the living. He was put to death, come on. For the transgression of my people was stricken. You see that he's explaining it again. So guess what? He's explaining verse 5 again in verse 8. He says, for the transgression of my people was he stricken. Okay? So that Isaiah is prophesying what's going to happen to the, our Lord and Savior. Because he was a born, and guess what? He hated them, they hated him. That's why when he walked out the earth, he was rebuking them left, right, and center. You understand? So now, get that in Matthew, okay? Matthew chapter 27. Matthew 27 and verse, verse 11. Watch this. Matthew chapter 27, verse 11. And Jesus stood before the governor. And the governor asked him, saying, Art thou the king of the Jews? And Jesus said unto him, Thou sayest. That's what you say. Go ahead. And when he was accused of the chief priests and elders, he answered nothing. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Then said Pilate unto him, Carest thou not how many things they witness against thee? 
and he answered him to and he answered him to never a word in so much that the governor marveled greatly so pilot mother is like wait a minute aren't you hearing what they are saying go ahead now at that feast the governor was wont to release unto the people a prisoner whom they would so guess what there was amnesty so the amnesty was listen the prisoner must be released during this their feast okay go ahead and they had then a notable prisoner called Barabbas okay what verse you read verse 16 sir now read verse 15 excuse me sir matthew chapter 27 verse 15 now at that feast the governor was wont to release unto the people a prisoner whom they would right and they had then a notable prisoner called Barabbas. No, no. Yeah, yeah, Barabbas, come on. Therefore, when they were gathered together, Pilate said unto them, Whom will ye that I release unto you? Barabbas or Jesus, which is called Christ? Mm -hmm. So who must I release? Jesus, uh, Barabbas, this murderer and a criminal and a thief, or... Must we release Christ? What did the chief priest say? Watch this. For he knew that for envy they had delivered him. So you see why they delivered the Christ? They delivered Christ because there was envious of him. Go ahead. When he was set down on the judgment seat, his wife sent unto him, saying, Have thou nothing to do with that just man? For I have suffered many things this day in a dream because of him. You see what he's saying? He said, listen, don't have anything to do with this just man. Don't get yourself, don't get your hands, uh, don't, don't, may, his blood must not be upon you because he's a just man. Don't have anything to do with this, right? But the chief priests and elders persuaded the multitude that they should ask Barabbas and destroy Jesus. You see that? They wanted to release a criminal, you understand, and keep Jesus in, in prison. Go ahead. The governor answered and said unto them, Whether of the twain will ye that I release unto you? They said, Barabbas. Mm. Pilate said unto them, What shall I do then with Jesus, which is called Christ? They all say unto him, Let him be crucified. Let him be crucified. That's what they said. So guess what? An innocent man, he was what? He was sentenced to death. Go ahead. Matthew chapter 27, verse 23. And the governor said, Why? What evil has he done? But they cried out the more, saying, Let him be crucified. You see, he was asking, What evil did he do? Because he did no evil. Come on. When Pilate saw that he could prevail nothing, but that rather a tumult was made, he took mm. water and washed his hands before the multitude, saying, I am innocent of the blood of this just person. See ye to it. You see what he's saying? He says, listen, I'm innocent of this just person. You see what you do. Go ahead. Then answered all the people and said, his blood be on us and on our children. You cannot make this up. You cannot make this up. He says, let his blood be upon us and our children. Listen, meaning uh, we are willing to put our children on a, on a chopping block just to have this man be put to death. This is the mindset of the people. The mindset of our people is just like this. You understand? That's why each and every one of us, we, we all need to examine ourselves and sit down and examine the things you think, the things you say, how you behave and conduct yourself. It must be according to the scriptures. Why? The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Understand that. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Now, watch this. Um, uh, go back. Go back to Mark 12. Mark 12. Mark chapter 12 verse 7. Mm -hmm. But those husbandmen said nothing themselves. This is the heir. Come, let us kill him and the inheritance shall be ours. You see that thing? Let us kill him and the inheritance shall be ours. Why? Because they, were, they wanted to kill Christ because he was causing more problems for them. 
So when they conspired against him to kill him, get that in um, John chapter 11, verse 46. Because they wanted to kill the, they wanted to, to kill the Messiah. They killed the prophets before him. Now they want to kill him now. Because he's the one that is coming after the prophets because they paved the way for him. John the Baptist is one of them that paved the way for Christ. We're doing the same thing this day. Okay, John chapter 11, read verse 46. John chapter 11, verse 46. Come on. But some of them went their ways to the Pharisees and told them what things Jesus had done. So guess what? The, what were they doing? They, was, they were following him around to see what he's doing so they can report on their what? On the, to the scribes and Pharisees what Christ is doing. Come on. Then gathered the chief priests and the Pharisees a council and said, what do we for this man with many miracles? What are we going to do? Because this man is doing many miracles. He's healing the people. He's teaching the people. He's gathering the 12 tribes of Israel. What are we going to do? Come on. If we let him thus alone, all men will believe on him. Mm -hmm. And the Romans shall come and take away both our place and nation. You see that? Uh, because guess what? The only thing that they cared about was their status and their position and, and Rome, because Rome was feeding them. Rome was taking care of them. So they were willing to kill their own brother because why? Rome was feeding them. You had them back then, you're going to have them today. Okay? Watch this. Jump down to verse 51. Verse 51. And this spake he not of himself, but being high priest that year, he prophesied that Jesus should die for that nation. You see that, that Christ should die for that nation. This is Caiaphas. Now, what I'm showing you is what we just read, the chief priests gathered together, they conspired to how to overthrow Christ, how to destroy him, how to put him to death. And those that followed him as well. Okay? You can read about that in the book of Acts. Now read Mark 12, verse 8 now. Mark chapter 12, verse 8. Read. And they took him and killed him and cast mm. him out of the vineyard. Stop right there. Read that again. Mark chapter 12, verse 8. And they took him and killed him and cast him out of the vineyard. You know what? There's something I need to touch on this. Go back to verse 7. I need to touch on this. Mark chapter 12, verse 7. Mm -hmm. But those husbandmen said among themselves, This is the heir. Come, let us kill him, and the inheritance shall be ours. You see that part when it says, This is the heir? This is the heir? Watch this. We read it in Hebrews 1, verse 1 through 3. But I want to touch on it some more. This is the air. Watch this. Give me the book of Psalms, chapter 2. Let's go to the book of Psalms, okay? Psalms 2. And verse... Psalms, chapter 2. Let's read verse... Verse 6. Psalms 2, verse 6. Watch this. Psalms, chapter 2, verse 6. Mm-hmm. Yet have I set my king upon my holy hill of Zion. You see that? He says, have, yet have I set my king upon my holy hill of Zion. The king is talking about who? Christ, our Lord and Savior. Okay, the heir to the throne. Come on. I will declare the decree. The decree the, is the promise that was made to our forefather Abraham. Come on. The Lord had said unto me, Thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee. This day have I begotten thee, the only beloved of the Father, well beloved. Go ahead. Ask of me, and I shall give thee the heathen for thine inheritance. And the atom was part of the earth for thy possession. You see that? So now, guess what he's doing? He, the Lord is, is, is showing us through King David that, listen, Christ will sit on the throne. Okay? And the heathen will be for in his inheritance. Because he's the heir. Read. Thou shalt break them with a rod of iron. Thou shalt dash them in pieces like a potter's vessel. Meaning the heathens. Okay, come on. Be wise now, therefore, O ye kings. Be instructed, ye judges of the earth. You see that thing? It says, be instructed, ye judges of the earth. Come on. Serve the Lord with fear and rejoice with trembling. Mm -hmm. Kiss the sun, lest he be angry. He says, kiss and the sun, meaning worship the sun. Obey the sun, lest he be angry. Come on. And he perished from the way. Meaning he put him to death. Come on. When his wrath is kindled but a little. Blessed are all they that put their trust in him. You see that thing? Blessed are all they that put their trust in him. That's why it says kiss the sun, meaning worship the sun. Give me First Kings 19. 
First Kings chapter 19, verse 18. Watch this. First Kings chapter 19, verse 18. Yet I have left me 7,000 in Israel, all the knees which have not bowed unto Baal, and every mouth which had not kissed him. You see that? And every mouth which have not kissed him, meaning worshipped him. So when he says kiss the son, means worship the son. Obey him, lest he be angry and he puts you to death. You don't get the kingdom. That's what he said right there. Now watch this. Give me that in Galatians 4 verse 1. Galatians chapter 4 verse 1. Read. Now I say that the heir, as long as he is a child. The heir is Christ. The heir is talking about Christ. The heir, as long as he is a child. Come on. Differeth nothing from a servant. Mm -hmm. Though he be Lord of all. Though he be what? Though he be Lord of all. He's letting you know right there. He's talking about the Messiah. He's the heir. You understand? He differeth nothing from a servant. Though he be Lord of all, Lord of Lords, King of Kings, Lord of Lords. That's what he's saying right there. Watch this. Give me the book of Matthew 23. I'm going to show you something. He says, though an heir, as long as he's a child, he different nothing from a servant. Watch this. Um, yep. Matthew 23, verse 11. That's it right there. Matthew 23, verse 11. Watch this. Read it. Matthew chapter 23, verse 11. You know what? Start but, at verse 10. Read verse 10 and 11 together. Watch this. Matthew chapter 23, verse 10. Mm -hmm. Neither be ye called masters, for one is your master, even Christ. You see that? One is your master, even Christ. Come on. But he that is greatest among you shall be your servant. Read that again. Read that again. He that is what? He that is greatest among you shall be your servant. He that is greatest among you shall be your servant. He that is greatest among you shall be your servant. Who is he talking about? He's talking about himself. He is the greatest among us. And he was, a, he, was, he was a servant. How did he serve? He taught the people the laws of God. He raised up men. He groomed the people. He looked after the flock. He took care of the people. You understand? So he that is greatest among you shall be your servant. So let's go back. Galatians 4 verse 1. Galatians chapter 4 verse 1. Mm -hmm. Now I say that the heir, as long as he is a child, differeth nothing from a servant. Go ahead. Though he be Lord of all. Though he be Lord of all. Though he be Lord of all. Go ahead. But is under tutors and governors until the time appointed of the father. But is under tutors and governors until the time appointed of the father. I'm not touching that. Now, let's go back. Go back to Mark 12. Mark chapter 12 and verse 8 now. Mark chapter 12 verse 8. Go ahead. And they took him and killed him and cast him out of the vineyard. So they took him and they killed him. Give me that in, um, give me that in uh, Matthew, Matthew 27 verse 35. They took him and they killed him and cast him out of what? Out of the vineyard. Watch this. Matthew chapter 27 verse 35. Come on. And they crucified him. And, and they what? His garments. And they crucified him. And they crucified him. So what did they do? They took him. They killed him. Come on. And parted his garments. Mm. Casting lots. That it might be fulfilled. Which was spoken by the prophet. They parted my garments among them. And upon my vesture they cast lots. You see that? So guess what? What is happening here is. That's when Christ was crucified. That's when he what? He was put to death. Now, watch this. It says they, they, they killed him. They cast him out of the vineyard. What does that mean? He was cast out of the vineyard. Watch this. Give me the book of Hebrews, chapter 13. Hebrews 13. We're going to start at verse 10. Watch this. Pay attention. Hebrews, chapter 13, verse 10. Come on. We have an altar whereof they have no right to eat which serve the tabernacle. He says, we have an altar whereof they have no right to eat which serve the tabernacle, meaning those that serve the old covenant of animal sacrifice. Who was that? Give me that in Acts chapter 15 and 1. Acts chapter 15 verse 1. Come on. And certain men which came down from Judea taught the brethren and said, 
except he be circumcised after the man of Moses, he cannot be saved. You see what they was doing? They were still pushing the people to what? To remain under the law of animal sacrifice. But here the apostle Paul is explaining, says, we have an altar whereof they have no right to eat which serve the tabernacle, meaning the old covenant of animal sacrifice. The scribes and Pharisees, the wicked Negroes that was among the congregation, putting, taking the people back to the law of animal sacrifice. Today, this, the problem is not the law of animal sacrifice anymore. Today is the problem is Caesar Bourget. Today, the problem is Caesar Borges. That's the problem today. Okay. Get that in X, uh, read verse 10. X 15 verse 10. Jump down to verse 10. X chapter 15 verse 10. Go ahead. Now, therefore, why tempt ye God to put a yoke upon the necks of the disciples, which neither our fathers nor we were able to bear? You see that thing? It says, we could, our fathers could not bear the old covenant, the uh, covenant, the old uh, covenant of animal sacrifice. Neither, neither can we. You understand? Read on. But we believe that through the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, we shall be saved even as they. You see that? Is that through Christ we're going to get delivered? Not through the love, the, 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 not through animal sacrifice, we will not get delivered. But by the deeds of the Lord shall no flesh be justified. You understand? So go back, Hebrews chapter 13. Read verse 10 again. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 10. Read. We have an altar. Whereof they have no right to eat which serve the tabernacle. Come on. For the bodies of those beasts whose blood is brought into the sanctuary by the high priest for sin are That's banned on the without day the of camp. atonement. That's on the day of atonement. Read that again. Read that again. Verse 11. Pay attention here. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 11. Mm -hmm. For the bodies of those beasts whose blood is brought into the sanctuary by the high priest for sin. Mm -hmm. are banned without the camp. So the bodies of the, of the beasts, the beast goes into the blood of bulls and of goats, which could not take away sin. It says they were banned without the camp. Pay attention to that. Remember we read in Mark 12, it says it was cast out of the vineyard. That's what we're reading here. So this is symbolic of how, where Christ was going to be crucified. That's why it says the bodies of, because remember Christ represents what? Let's just get it. Give me Hebrews 10 verse 4. Hebrews chapter 10 verse 4. Come on. For it is not possible that the blood of bulls and of goats should take away sins. It is not possible. Because why? Because they could not make those that the comers they unto perfect. Read as pertaineth to the conscience. Come on. Wherefore, when he cometh into the world, he saith, Sacrifice an offering thou wouldest not. Mm -hmm. But a body has thou prepared me. Come on. In burnt offerings and sacrifices for sin. You thou see that thing? Pleasure. In burnt offerings and sacrifices for sin, thou hast had no pleasure, but the body has thou prepared me. Whose body? The body of Christ was prepared to replace the blood of bulls and of goats which could not take away sin. Go back to Hebrews 13. Read verse 11 again. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 11. For the bodies of those beasts whose blood is brought into the sanctuary by the high priest for sin are burned without the camp. They were burned without the camp at the altar of burnt offerings. When you read the, the Old Testament in Exodus, Leviticus, you read about that. You understand? At the altar of burnt offerings. That's why it says they were burned without the camp. The blood was brought. You understand? It says the, the blood was brought was brought into the sanctuary by the high priest, you know, the sons of Aaron, for sin. And the, and the what? And, the, um, and are burned without the camp. But they were burned, the, the bodies were burned without the camp. Go ahead. Wherefore Jesus also. Wherefore Jesus also, meaning the same way likewise, the, 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 the bodies of the beasts whose blood was brought in by the sanctuary, um, brought into the sanctuary by the high priest for sin, are burned without the camp. Wherefore, Jesus also, meaning Christ likewise, come on, that he might sanctify the people with his own blood. You see that thing? So the same way the high priest sanctified the people with the blood of bulls and of goats, Christ also is going to sanctify the people, the 12 tribes of Israel, with his own blood. Read. 
suffered without the gate. So Christ suffered without the gate. Give me John 19. He suffered without the gate. Without the gate. Give me the book of John chapter 19. Um, read verse. John chapter 19 and verse. No, no. Let me not go to John 19. I think Matthew 26. Hold on a second. Yeah, give me Matthew, uh, Matthew chapter 27. Matthew 27 and verse, read verse 45. Start at verse 44. We're going to read down. Matthew chapter 27, verse 44. Read. The thieves also, which were crucified with him, cast mm -hmm. the same in his teeth. Read. Now from the sixth hour, there was darkness over all the land unto the ninth hour. Go ahead. And about the ninth hour, Jesus cried with a loud voice, saying, Eli, Eli, lama sabakatan, that is to say, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? You see that? Now remember, it says, he cried with a loud voice, saying, Eli, Eli, lama sabakatan, that is to say, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Go ahead. Some of them that stood there, when they heard that, said, This man calleth for Elias. That's also letting you know that the Hebrew that they spoke was, was corrupted Hebrew. Because they didn't pick up he was speaking Hebrew. They thought he was calling Elijah. You see that thing? Even during the time of Christ, the Hebrew that they spoke was no longer pure Hebrew. Okay, go ahead. And straightway, one of them ran and took a sponge and filled it with vinegar and put in and put it on a reed and gave him to drink mm. the rest said let be let us see whether elias will come to save him you see that thing let's see if eliza elijah will come to save him okay go ahead jesus when he had cried again with a loud voice yielded up the ghost he yielded up the ghost, meaning he died. Now watch this. Give me John 19. John chapter 19 and verse 6. Watch this. John chapter 19, verse 6. Mm -hmm. When the chief priests, therefore, and officers saw him, they cried out, saying, Crucify him, crucify mm. him. Pilate saith unto them, Take ye him and crucify him, for I find no fault in him. I don't find no fault with this man. Now jump down to verse 16. Watch this. Verse 16. You know what? Start at verse 14. John chapter 19, verse 14. Come on. And it was the preparation of the Passover. Mm. And about the sixth hour, and he saith unto the Jews, Behold your king. Behold your king. It was the preparation of the Passover because Christ is our Passover which was crucified for us. You understand? And about the sixth hour, he said unto the Jews, Behold your king. Go ahead. But they cried out, Away with him, away mm. with him. Crucify him. Pilate said unto them, Shall I crucify your king? Mm. The chief priest answered, We have no king but Caesar. Look at the level of disrespect. You know that mother that came to the camp and said, So who's this? You know, I cannot forget that. The level of disdain and hatred that she had for the, the, the biblical description of the black Messiah, listen, you, it, it, you could not miss it. It was obvious. Read. The chief priest answered, we have no king but Caesar. Come on. Then delivered he him, therefore unto them to be crucified. Mm -hmm. And they took Jesus and led him away. Stop right there. They did what? And they took Jesus and led him away. They took Christ and led him away. They took Christ and led him away. Hold this. Give me the book of Isaiah 53, verse 10. Um, read verse 7. Isaiah chapter 53, verse 7. Come on. He was oppressed and he was afflicted. Mm -hmm. Yet he opened not his mouth. Read. For he is brought as a lamb to the slaughter. He is what? For he is brought as a lamb to the slaughter. He is brought as a lamb to the slaughter. He is brought as a lamb to the slaughter because he was the sacrificial lamb. Okay, come on. And as a sheep before 
her shearers is dumb mm-hmm. so he opens not his mouth he opened not he openeth not his mouth because the sheep will not cry when he's going to the slaughter likewise christ did not open his mouth because he knew the work that he had to do for the 12 tribes of israel to glorify his father which is in heaven jump down to verse 10 watch this verse 10 yet it pleased the lord to bruise him mm. he had put him to grief Read. When thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin. When shall what? When thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin. When thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin. An offering for sin. An offering for sin. When thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin. Just like the lamb that was used as an offering for sin. Get that in, get that in Leviticus chapter 9 verse 3. When thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin, an offering for sin. Read that. Leviticus chapter 9, verse 3. Come on. And unto the children of Israel thou shalt speak, saying, Take ye a kid of the goats for a sin offering. For a what? For a sin offering. For a what? For a sin offering. For a sin offering. So take ye the kids of the goats for a sin offering. Come on. And a calf and a lamb. And a calf and a lamb. Read. Both of the first year without blemish. Without what? Without blemish. Because he was an innocent man. So this lamb represents Christ. Come on. For a burnt offering. For a burnt offering. Go back to Isaiah 53. Read verse 10 again. Isaiah chapter 53 verse 10. Mm -hmm. Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. He hath put him to grief. When thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin. Mm. he shall see his seed he shall prolong his days come on he shall prolong his days and the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand come on he shall see of the travail of his soul and Mm. shall be satisfied he shall be satisfied come on by his knowledge shall my righteous servant justify many many of the Israelites by his knowledge shall my righteous servant justify many the righteous servant is Jesus the Christ. Go ahead. For he shall bear their iniquities. He shall bear their sins. You understand? Go ahead. Come on. Verse 12. Read. Therefore will I divide him a portion with the great. The 144,000. That's the portion with the great. That's the great he's talking about. Come on. And he shall divide the spoil with the strong. The spoil is the hidden for an inheritance in Psalms chapter 2 verse 7 and 8. Come on. Because he has poured out his soul unto death. Read. And he was numbered with the transgressors. The two thieves on either side of him. Come on. And he bare the sin of many and the made intercession. Tribes. Come on. And made intercession for the transgressors. He made intercession for us, the transgressors. Okay, now go back to John 19 now. John chapter 19. Read verse, verse 16 again. John chapter 19, verse 16. Read. Then delivered he him therefore unto them to be crucified. Mm -hmm. And they took Jesus and led him away. They took Christ and led him away. They took Christ and led him away. Come on. And he bearing his cross went forth into a place called the place of a skull. He says, and he bearing his cross went forth into a place called the place of the skull. Because that's where they will bring all the criminals, which is our people, where they would crucify them and torture them. Go ahead. Which is called in the Hebrew, Golgotha. Golgotha. So guess what? That place that is without the camp, that is the place called Golgotha. That's outside. They took, they killed him. They crucified him. They took, they put him outside of the vineyard. What was the vineyard? The tabernacle that we had. We had the outer court, the inner court, and the holies of all. You understand? And on the outer court, you had the altar of burnt offering. Guess what? Christ, when he went to Golgotha, He was that sacrificial lamb at the altar of burnt offering as a sacrifice for the 12 tribes of Israel. Go back to Mark chapter 12, verse 8. Verse 7, verse 8 again. Come on. Mark chapter 12, verse 8. You know what? Before you get that, go back to Hebrews 13. Read verse 12. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 12. Read. Right? Wherefore, Jesus also, that he might sanctify the people with his own blood, suffered without the gate. Golgotha. 
Golgotha. When he says suffered without the gate, that's Golgotha. Okay, come on. Let us go forth therefore unto him without the camp. Let us also, let us also go forth therefore unto him. The him is Christ without the camp, meaning what? Golgotha, outside of the camp, because now that, that goes into what? The new covenant that is being ushered in. Let us go forth also therefore unto him without the camp. Go ahead. Bearing his reproach. Bearing his reproach because he was crucified, he was tortured, he was put to death, killed with a very humiliating death. Go ahead. For here have we no continuing city. You see what they are saying? He says, because here have we no continuing city. The continuing city is what? Is going into what? He says, we have no continuing city, meaning put away the law of animal sacrifice because it does not play anymore, the law of animal sacrifice, because now Christ is the ultimate sacrifice. Put away the sacrifices. That's what he's saying. That's why he says, for here have we no continuing city. Come on. But we seek one to come. The new covenant of the new covenant under Christ now. That's what he's talking about. Go back to Mark chapter 12, verse 8. One more again. Mark chapter 12, verse 8. Read. And they took him and killed him and cast him out of the vineyard. They cast him out of the vineyard without the camp, the place of the, the skull that is in Hebrew called Golgotha. Go ahead. What shall therefore the Lord of the vineyard do? What shall the Lord of the vineyard do now, now that they've done this? They've killed our Lord and Savior. They say, crucify him, let his blood be upon us and our children. Go ahead. He will come and destroy the husbandmen mm. and will give the vineyard unto others. You see that? He will come and destroy the husbandmen. Guess what? Who's the husbandmen? The scribes and Pharisees, the chief priests who hated these gods. The Lord, when he returns, he is going to destroy them. Understand that thing. Watch this. Give me that in Revelation 1 verse 6 and 7. Revelation chapter 1 verse 6. Mm -hmm. And has made us kings and priests unto God and his father. That's in the coming kingdom. Come on. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Go ahead. Behold, he cometh with clouds. And every eye shall see him. Every eye shall see him when the Lord returns. He comes with clouds, meaning chariots and millions of angels. Come on. And they also which pierced him. And which all they whoa, whoa, whoa. And they also which did what? And they also which pierced him. Meaning they they also, the scribes and Pharisees and our foremothers and forefathers that did that killed our Lord and Savior. Our people that killed him, he says they also gonna see him when he returns. They're going to remember that they were the ones that pushed the javelin through his, his stomach. Go back, go get that in John 19, verse 33. John chapter 19, verse 33. Read. But when they came to Jesus and saw that he was dead already, they break not his legs. Because it was according to the prophecy in Psalms. Go ahead. But one of the soldiers with the spear pierced his side. Mm. And forthwith came there out blood and water. Came there out what? Came there out blood and water. And came there out what? Blood and water. So letting you know he was what? Flesh and blood. He was made from men and women having sex. That's another precept you can use. Go back to Revelation 1 verse 7 again. Revelation chapter 1 verse 7. Behold, he cometh with clouds and every eye shall see him. And they also which pierced him. Mm -hmm. And all kindreds of the earth shall wail because of him. Even Wait. so, amen. Even so, amen. We agree, amen, to that. All praises to the Most High. Go back to Mark now. Mark chapter 12, verse 9. What shall therefore the Lord of the vineyard do? Mm -hmm. He will come and destroy their husbandmen and will give the vineyard unto others. You give the vineyards unto others. Get that in Matthew 19, verse 28. You know what? Get not Matthew 19. Yeah, Matthew 19, 28 is the precept, but I'm gonna I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna show you something. Get Revelation 7, verse 4. Revelation chapter 7, verse 4. Go ahead. 
And I heard the number of them which were sealed. Mm. And there were sealed 140 and 4,000 of all the tribes of the children of Israel. The 144,000, these are the, that's the leading body of the nation of Israel. And among the 144, you have this. Get that in Revelation, uh, Matthew 19, verse 28 now. You've got the 12 apostles, okay? Matthew chapter 19, verse 28. Read. Right. And Jesus said unto them, Verily mm -hmm. I say unto you, that ye which have followed me in the regeneration, when the Son of Man shall sit in the throne of his glory, ye also shall sit upon 12 thrones, judging the 12 tribes of Israel. You see that? Ye also, meaning you disciples, you're going to also sit upon what? He says, you're going to sit upon the throne. When the Son of Man shall sit upon his throne, ye also shall sit upon 12 thrones, judging the 12 tribes of Israel. So guess what? The heir, as long as he's a child, different nothing from a servant, though he be Lord of all, but he's under tutors and governors until the time appointed of the fathers. I said something there. Get that in Matt, Isaiah now. Go back to Mark 12. Mark chapter 12 and verse... Now let's read verse 10. Mark chapter 12 verse 10. Go ahead. And have ye not read the scripture... Mm. The stone which the builders rejected has become the head of the corner. You see that? The stone which the builders rejected is become the head of the corner. Who was the builders? The scribes and Pharisees because they sat in Moses' seat. Get that in Isaiah 28. Isaiah chapter 28 verse 16. Watch this. Start of verse 14. We're going to read down. Isaiah chapter 28 verse 14. Mm-hmm. Wherefore, hear the word of the Lord, ye scornful men. He's going into the scribes and Pharisees. Ye scornful men, come on. That ruled his people, which is in Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. Because he have said, we have made a covenant with death. They made a covenant with death. Because Isaiah is prophesying about the scribes and Pharisees when they made a covenant with death, meaning Rome. Today, they've made a covenant with, with, a covenant with the United States of America, Babylon the Great. Read. And with hell are we at agreement. You see that? And with hell are we at agreement. Come on. When the overflowing skirt shall pass through, it shall not come unto us. Mm -hmm. For we have made lies our refuge. Meaning Caesar Borgia, Christianity. Caesar Borgia, Christianity, feminism. That's the lies that they are protecting themselves with. Read. And under falsehood have we hid ourselves. The falsehood that they are hiding themselves under is what? The perverted gospel of Caesar Borgia. Go ahead. Therefore, thus said the Lord God, Behold, I lay in Zion for your foundation a stone, mm -hmm. a tried stone, a precious cornerstone. Go ahead. A sure foundation. Mm. He that believeth shall not make haste. You see that he that believeth on this tried stone, this foundation, this, this, this foundation, this, guess what? It says what? They shall not make haste, meaning they are not going to be ashamed. That's what we're doing, brothers and sisters. Understand that. Okay, give me that in First Peter. I'm almost done. First Peter. I have to finish this parable. There's a lot in this stuff. First Peter chapter 2. Okay. First Peter chapter 2 and verse 7. Start of verse 6. First Peter chapter 2, verse 6. Read. Wherefore also it is contained in the scripture. Behold, I lay in Zion a chief cornerstone, elect, precious, and he that believeth on him shall not be confounded. You're not going to be confounded by what's going on. Read. Unto you therefore which believe he is precious, mm -hmm. but unto them which be disobedient, the stone which the builders disallowed, the same that? is made. The stone, the stone which the builders disallowed. Who was the builders? The scribes and Pharisees, they were the builders. Come on. The same is made the head of the corner. You see that the same is made an heir. Go ahead. And a stone of stumbling. A stone of, of stumbling. Offense. A stone of stumbling to the builders. Okay. A stone of stumbling to the builders. Come on. And a what? And a rock of offense to the builders come on even to them which stumble at the word because the builders they stumbled at the word right being disobedient 
whereunto also they were appointed. Now that's some heavy stuff right there. It says they were appointed to be a stone of stumbling, a rock of offense. And understand? They are also they're gonna stumble at the word. They are going to be disobedient in the congregation. Whereunto also they were appointed from the beginning, meaning that's their lot. This is some heavy stuff, man. Now go back to Mark 12. Listen, brothers. Listen, we're building a nation. This is not a place to hang out. We are at war. <laughs> we must all understand this thing. We are at war, we, and we are soldiers of Christ. This is a military camp, okay? Mark 12, verse 10. Mark chapter 12, verse 10. Mm -hmm. And have you not read the scripture? The stone which the builders rejected has become the head of the corner. Read. This was the Lord's doing, and it is marvelous in our eyes. Read that again, verse 11. Mark chapter 12, verse 11. Mm. This was the Lord's doing, and it is marvelous in our eyes. You see that this was the Lord's doing, and it is marvelous in our eyes. Isn't it marvelous in our eyes that the Lord is doing this? Meaning the Lord did all this. For our benefit. Okay, go ahead. Watch this. Read. And they sought to lay hold on him. Mm. But feared the people. Stop right there. You don't think you're, that's what the people are thinking when we go out and teach? Read that again because I don't think, some of you don't get it. Read verse 12 again. Mark chapter 12 verse 12. Read. And they sought to lay hold on him. But feared the people. They, they wanted to put hands on us. So the people want to put hands on us, but they are afraid of the people. For they knew that he had spoken the parable against them. You see that thing? <laughs> because they knew that he had spoken a parable against them. Come on. And they left him and went their way. So now guess what? They got offended. That's why they, they beat, they stoned. They wounded and they killed the servants, the prophets that were sent unto them. So that's why when Christ spoke in parables today, he's, open up, he's opening up the understanding that we can make, we can explain the parables, what they mean. What was Christ talking about? That's what we just went over. You understand? Watch this. Go ahead, verse 13. And they sent unto him certain of the Pharisees and of the Herodians to catch him in his words. Stop right there. So the Pharisees and the Herodians, remember, these were for, for Herod. They were about Rome. They were, they were supporting Rome 100%. But guess what? These Pharisees and these Herodians, to catch him at his word, where do you think they were? They were among the people, the multitude that used to follow Christ to listen to him teach. And they feigned themselves just men. They pretended that they're about this, but they were not. But they, guess what? They were spies. You see that? Watch this. One more. One more. Mm. Yeah. Give me Sarah chapter 11. Sarah chapter 11 verse 29. Watch this. Ecclesiastes chapter 11 verse 29. Come on. Bring not every man into thine house. The house here, yes, he's talking about our physical houses that we have, the places that, you know, covering the roof to cover shame. But this also goes into the congregation. Right? For the deceitful man has many trains. For the deceitful man has many tricks. And he had many uh, tricks up their sleeves. Go ahead, watch this. Like as a partridge taken and kept in a cage. Like as a partridge taken and kept in a cage. I think a partridge is a bird. Is kept, taken and kept in a cage. Go ahead. So is the heart of the proud. The heart of the proud is like that. The heart of the proud is like a partridge that is taken and kept in a cage. Meaning because they cannot do what they want. So the cage is the Bible. But they are the proud. They cannot help themselves. Go ahead. And like as a spy. Watch it, he for thy fall. You see that thing? And like as a spy, watch it, he for your fall. You see this thing right here? 
That's exactly what they was doing to Christ. They was watching for his, they were watching for him to fall. Meaning what? They wanted to catch something out of his mouth so they can use it against him. Meaning what? Whenever he taught, they did not like how he taught. You understand? They did not like how he made decisions. Why? Because mm, he thinks it's better. He thinks it's this. Listen, this is not new. The spirits of old, they are back. The evil ones and the good ones, they are all back. The good ones will see the evil ones too. But the Lord says, let them grow all together, the wheat and the tares. And when the time of harvest, we're going to know which one is the, the approved of the Lord and which ones are not. And with that, we say, oh, praise to the Lord. I'm going to end the class right there. I'm going to end the class right there. Let's break bread in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. For I have received of the Lord that which also I deliver unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed to bread, and when given thanks, he break it and said, Take it. This is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause, many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. In the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Let's give the Lord a hand for that. All praises to the Most High.